Uh, it being 6.30 on or, uh, on or about 6.30 on April 16, 2019, I call this meeting of the Eastern Conservation Commission to order. Um, we're going to reshuffle things a little bit here. Um, I guess first notice you're being audio and video recorded, so act accordingly. And 53 Peterson Road. Yes. You guys? Come on up. We're going to take you guys first because we have a kind of limited time frame for all of us here. you got to get back to the Jeopardy. Wow, <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> that's a new one. That's a good one. Trebek. That's outstanding. <laughs> well, motion to continue, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, so my name's Frank Gallagher. Uh, I'm a Gallagher Engineering in Foxborough, and I'm here with Sean Carnes, who's the owner of uh, 53. Peterson Road mm -hmm. and the applicant on this um, notice of intent. So, so the work that we're looking to get your approval on is um, a septic system repair, replacement, really. Mm -hmm. um, now the house is at the, almost at the end of Peterson Road. Mm -hmm. uh, if you look at my plan north, go straight up the page. And, so if you're going down Peterson Road, it's on the right-hand side, just before the circle. Oh, um, we um, we had um, Dave Gordon, uh, whose company is Thunder Chase um, Environmental, and they he came out and did a delineation. This is essentially it's just like a small closed-in pond, mm -hmm. and he in his report called it isolated land subject to flooding. But he also put um, put some flagging in um, where he he sort of felt like there was a, a break in the top of a bank. Mm -hmm. So that's what we have shown as uh, bank one to twenty on the plan. And then this uh, red line is a fifty foot buffer zone, and then this is a hundred foot buffer zone. So right now it's an existing house, driveway, all that's been there. I don't know, for a long, long time. Maybe it was built in the 70s. I, I just, you know, it's been there quite a while. And there's a cesspool that's located in the back of the house, so pipe comes out and into a cesspool. That's actually within the 50-foot buffer zone. So what we um, would like to do is just to take out that cesspool, put in a 1,500-gallon septic tank to um, two leaching trenches that are on the side of the house. We did uh, test holes, it's all good material, sand, two minute perks. Um, and we do have just enough room to kind of squeeze it in and keep it outside the 50 foot buffer zone. Right. Um, we did ask for one uh, local upgrade approval waiver from, uh, from the, um, the Board of Health. We actually asked for two, I should say. We, we're generally required to be four, uh, 20 feet from the foundation wall to the leaching field. We asked them to waive that down to 12 mm -hmm. uh, because we also need 10 feet from the lot line. So we really can't have both. We'd rather keep it away from the, the lot line, the, the required 10 feet. Mm -hmm. And then we asked for a separation to groundwater to be waived from five feet, which you normally have to provide if you have two-minute soil. And we asked them to waive that down to 4.4, just because we have that, if we take the existing pipe at the house and we, you know, work grades from there, it lands us at that 4.4 feet rather than the five. And we can't really pick it up at the house, uh, so... Okay. And were you granted those waivers? We haven't yet uh, okay. gotten their approval. We've we've applied, okay. uh, but we haven't yet got their final approval. All right. Um, I guess one follow-up question before you go too much farther. Do you guys have your DEP number? No, we don't. Okay. We don't. Right. Um, so we, we will need that to close the um, the hearing out. But I mean, it looks like you're doing everything you can to tuck it out yeah. of there mm -hmm. and get the variances you need. Mike, you got anything on this one? No, no, it looks good. I'm just so get the DP I'm, number. I'm, uh, on my visit to the site, um, 
there's a white PVC pipe that's in the um, embankment on the the uh, westerly side of this property. It looks like it may have been used at one time to feed the, the rainwater off the roof. And it, it feeds down into the wetland. It's about halfway down. Okay. I just don't know. I mean, it's uh, about a six inch PVC, white that PVC. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. I think that was for roof down stuff. I think it was. Uh, it's, I'm not sure if it's still that way or no, it's just, it's no. not attached to anything. Okay, so that yeah, yeah, we can pull the pipe out if you want. Yeah. I prefer uh, to not have right. pipe going into the wetland. Yeah. So I mean, that, yeah. that's my the only thing that I would suggest. All right. Okay, and then um, we'll just do permanent markers along the limit of work. I guess so. Um, the, uh, I, I guess we got to just maybe think about where those would be. Just because, you know, this is all gone. And I, I brought the hay bales into the house here. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, there is, there is lawn beyond that. So I, I think there's a pretty natural sort of top of that embankment. Yeah. yeah. And I think yeah. probably that's probably what we should probably go for, to okay. be honest. I mean, Sounds good. Okay. Maybe you can just add them to the, the plan uh, okay. for when you guys come back. All right. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, very good. Any public comments on 53 Peterson Road? Oh. Um, in the you Thank you. Nice. Uh, seeing none, uh, would you guys like to continue to the next meeting? Please. Okay. Yes. I'm sure we'll have a number. Yes. May 6th. May 6th. All right. Uh, motion to continue 53 Peterson Road to our May 6th meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good one, guys. Um, 10 Michelle Way. Who was the second one? Go on, go on. Good evening, gentlemen. Good evening. You might just sign in, please. Mm -hmm. Ken Michelle Way. Mm -hmm. Andrea. Thank you, Jeff. You're welcome. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you folks had time to read the uh, review that Andrea put together, but just for a synopsis, um, ZRM previously had an order of conditions issued for 10 Michelle Way. Um, and just talking a little bit of the site, if uh, We have a wetland located at the uh, western extent of the site. And pre-development and post-development, the design for the backyards there was always to have the drainage flow east to west toward that wetland. That's how it did before development, and that's what the idea was doing um, once the lot was developed. Yeah. Somewhere along the line, we had the lots designed. There was a discrepancy between the design plans and the actual installed foundation. Um, the design foundation is always designed to be walkouts. And if you look at the design plan, there wasn't quite that elevation that allowed for that. Um, so when they were put in, they put in a little bit low. What happened, we, had a, uh, we have a low point now at the base of 10 Michelle Way. And that kind of stops the water from flowing along there. Um, the previous engineering company tried to do a fix there. They put in a, uh, a recharge system, gives rid of some of that water in the back. It helps to an extent, um, but during um, times of high groundwater and no growing seasons, um, you, you do find some ponding back there. Actually, a significant amount of ponding. This, these yeah, pictures, the six months. Yeah, these pictures yeah. here were taken in January. That was just a little bit of snow melt and some rain, so you can wow. see you start getting a lot of ponding back there. Wow. Yeah, there's still standing water up there. Yeah. A, a, wow. I didn't want to by there today, but I know. Alex, yes, yeah, I, <laughs> I saw you this weekend. I think. Yeah, I was there Saturday. Okay. Yeah, that's not ideal. 
So again, we do. So there was a drainage system involved. Can I this for the Absolutely, yes. Um, and we did put that in the notice of intent. Um, there was a previous design file along with that, and the engineer at that time, even I think then, recognized that there'd probably be a need for an overflow pipe, and it was shown on there. But since it wasn't permitted, it was, would have been in your jurisdiction. It was left as a future overflow pipe. Mm -hmm. So we're here tonight to try to get that future overflow pipe uh, into the present and get this design. So what we're proposing to do is, if you see in the plan, we have an uh, inlet structure behind 10 Michelle Way that ties into the inlet structures behind the other two houses there. Currently, it's just an infiltration system. We're looking to tie in an 8-inch pipe, wrap it around 10 Michelle Way, keep respecting your 50-foot no disturb area, and discharge it just beyond, um, what is that, 8 Michelle Way? Six. Six, six I'm sorry. <coughs> Just beyond there, where we, that's where we can get the uh, elevation we need for gravity discharge. Uh, what, we're, again, we're proposing to do is put in a small stilling area, um, make sure there's no erosive velocities involved with the pipe, mm -hmm. and we're also proposing to restore any area that's temporarily disturbed with the, uh, a wetland-type seed mix, so it's almost like a little bit of a buffer enhancement. It's a small footprint, mm -hmm. um, but typically that's just what we do when we work in the buffer. So. Um, yeah, you're just going to need to like just trench along. Through. Yeah, it's a shallow trench. It's not a deep. We're not talking about a water trench. We're talking yeah. a few feet down. Um, small machine, uh, eight-inch pipes. So we're not in a real big area. Um, obviously, erosion control installed. And then once we put the pipe in, the permanent disturbance area. It's a 10 by 12 little stilling area with the um, a level spreader at the top here. So again, we don't get the erosive velocities. We store that with the seed, some stone at the bottom, and um, really just call it a day there. Uh, we've met, we believe, all the um, performance standards that you have for as far as local jurisdiction. State jurisdiction, we're not doing any work within the buffer, so we're kind of outside of that. Uh, but we've, um, we've met your performance standards for both BBW and there's also some local jurisdiction riverfront involved with this as well. Um, so again, the permanent disturbance in this area would be 120 square feet for that stilling. Um, we believe a mitigation that we're providing would be that planting and the restoration of the original drainage flow for the area. Okay. Uh, and did you guys see the staff report with the recommendations? And we did, the, uh, yes. All the uh, recommendations? The only one here, I actually just saw it tonight, um, but I think the biggest one, we talked about it before, was just the recording of the easement. Yes. The, uh, yeah. And if you're okay with that. Of yeah. course. Okay. It's not, not an issue anyways. They're not supposed to go anywhere towards that area, right. the future, right. uh, my future buyers. So, so there's a... Um, there's a, an existing um, feature, we we'll call it a feature, in the front yard of 10 <laughs> that's um, meant to be sort of some sort of overflow or something. My understanding is that's the design for the street drainage infiltration area. That that's correct. That was permitted with the uh, subdivision correct. itself. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Um, is that working properly? Yeah. The flooding does not occur in that area, right. nor is it an overflow to that area. Right. Um, and as you've seen it out there, perhaps, that backyard is just a very gentle hump right, right along that edge there. It's probably less than a foot, but just enough to back everything up. Right. So yeah. um, when we were out there that time when those pictures were taken, I didn't see any standing water in that and the feature in the front. Yeah, there wasn't any there. I okay, so that's probably working, obviously. No, that side. feature, if I recall from a previous mm -hmm. hearing, Mr. Attenero from ET had explained that when they originally put that in, and I forget what the hearing was for, but it was for, for one of the neighbor's house, and that, that front was just to stop from the back of that property just to kind of slow down some of that. Okay. So it's obviously doing its job. Yeah, there's no bonding. So. Yeah, I didn't see any bonding there. So. I just I remember that from... So um, so all the... Um, all the this drainage basin in the front? Yeah. Uh, so all, all of the... Um, all the backyards that are all have water in them, uh, and, and significantly right. higher than the drain, um, you know, inlets. There, yes. Right. I mean, significantly higher. I mean, maybe a six inches, eight inches higher. That's than correct. That. Absolutely. Six yeah. inches. And, and one, there appears to be some pump in it that's pumping water out of it. I don't know if that's just trying to get. Just know, get the down elevation. I tried that actually once, and it didn't work because the water is coming back. <laughs> yeah. I forgot to take yeah. it out. Yeah. It made a nice circulation pump. <laughs> yeah. So just. For future reference, it's probably not a great idea to leave that in there when the conservation commission is and you're pumping water into the wetlands. So just 
keep that in mind. Sorry about that. Understand what's going on here. It, it, do you believe this is going to resolve the ponding issues behind 14 and 12? I do. We, I, it's not just thrown together. Because there's a lot of water. Yeah, there. and it's not just a thrown together design. I mean, yeah, we, yeah. Did, we did size the pipe, and what I usually size the pipe for is, you know, typically you've probably heard of 100 year storms, and the seven roughly have half inches per 24 hours. We design them for a two inch storm over two hours, which is a typically a more destructive or, or problematic storm that you're going to get. A real high intensity storm low time of concentration, um, and this pipe will take that capacity. I didn't take in credit for the infiltration, which will happen in areas, you know, when we have um, either low ground water, or now we start to have the plants growing again to start to suck the water up again. So we don't take credit for infiltration. So I don't think there's any issue with that pipe taking that, what's gonna be back there. It just doesn't have right now any place for it to go. So any bit of water is gonna stay there for the most part, especially more in January, and you could have a frost layer on the ground as well. So you're gonna get the water coming up and no place to even store it. So yeah, I understand that that should take care of this issue. Okay. Um, I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm just amazed by the amount of water that's standing there. Mm -hmm. it, it's a depth that it is too. Um, it just seems like a lot of water. Mm -hmm. I'm, hard to, I'm having a hard time sort of imagining where it's going to go. It's always, it's always been designed, you know, as we mentioned. It's always gone from here down to the well. It's always right. flowed there. And now which is here. It's got that little crest right here. We're getting it to go the same place down here. We also looked into, there's a pipe coming straight across here. You know, we looked into the potential of tying into that pipe. The issue we would have there is you have a wetland system up here, a little higher elevation. And if we were to tie into that pipe, this elevation is higher than this elevation. So if this pipe, where it outlets right here, was able to get blocked up, this would be the relief point here. So that would be a bad idea. <laughs> so we just, that's why it's kind of wrapping down yeah, like this yeah. and coming into sure. here. So and that was the original idea. Yeah. So it, it will never work. So yeah, it, this, is, this is a relief system. And again, hopefully, you know, it, it's not gonna go all the time, you know, but there will be times in the winter and, Times of the high flows and everything else, so it will be. But, um, Andrew, anything you want to add to? No, I just um, would like to point out that the intermittent stream in this case is the culverted pipe from wetland to wetland, mm -hmm. and it was identified as a as a type one, even though it's inside the culvert. So um, I kept that because it was in a previous decision. Yeah, that sounds good. Um, all right. All right. Any public comments on 10 Michelle Way? Um, seeing none, would you like to close? Yes, please. Um, motion to close and issue a permit to work in order of conditions with the uh, recommendations noted in, noted in item 7 of the staff report dated April 16th. Mr. Chair, can I ask? I'm sorry, before we sure. close. Um, this order of conditions is scheduled to expire in August of this year. Mm -hmm. Is there any way we could take the opportunity to request an extension at this point? Since this work's going to be take probably a little longer, so. I don't have a problem. It's not a problem. It's not something that you have to publicly advertise. All right. Oh, okay. Great. Um, so the, all right. The one, the one thing before we do this, mm -hmm. do we need to see the, the the recorded easement prior to starting construction? Is what prior, I suggest. Okay. So okay. Yeah. So, prior to construction. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So. All right, and I'm um, going to amend that motion to note that we want to we, we do want to see that it was properly recorded um, before the start of construction, and um, uh, also a motion to extend uh, uh, part to the existing order of conditions. Two years, one year, whatever you guys think. I mean, a year, that's more than enough. A year. Yeah. A year. A year. A year. All right. Everything is done except for this, and they have, they're really okay. motivated. All right, so we also, you're sure you're yes. All right, so um, also a motion to uh, grant an extension of the existing order of conditions for one more year. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks. Thank you, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Um, you so that, that was one motion, two motions with one vote. Okay. Yeah. <coughs> um, 150 Boundary Street. You want to do that before you go into your thing, or do you want to hear these ladies? Are you going to come out of your conference hall? Yeah. Um, just to tell you guys, before we um, start on this, um, oh, since, it, since it came up at a prior meeting, um, I, I, um, I, I 
have a financial interest um, related to this, and I disclosed it, um, and it was approved uh, by the Board of Selectmen that it wasn't substantial enough to affect my um, ability to deliberate, so I am allowed to participate in this. So I just wanted to make that clear for the record since I did recuse myself from the prior vote related to that. Thank you. And it's a good thing you did that because otherwise we wouldn't have formed tonight. It's vacation week. Hey, Matt. Yeah, we're down more from the commissioner um, than we anticipated. The certificate of mailing. Um, in addition to the um, the applicant in the uh, uh, his his. Um, Representative. Representative. Um, sorry. And um, I wanted to also point out that Dr. David Mitchell is the peer review consultant for this project. Um, is it going to be appropriate for uh, Dr. Mitchell to come up to the table? Um, sure. That'd be great. Thank you. Just come and join us. Roy, pass those over to Keith, please. Yes, thank you. And you guys are all getting signed in. Uh, you just state your names for the record, please. Um, Matthew Salem, Solitude Lake Management. Lee Kinstein, Maplewood Country Day Camp. And David Mitchell. Thanks, guys. Uh, all right, so why don't you give us a rundown of the, uh, the project today? Great. Thank you so much for uh, holding the hearing. As I said, my name is Matt Salem. I am the pr permit coordinator and GIS specialist with Solitude Lake Management. Um, Lee Pinstein, who's the owner of Maplewood Country Day Camp, um, is uh, attending as well. And a little brief history on our company, Solitude Lake Management. Uh, we have provided lake and pond management services throughout New England and um, currently have grown to uh, service water bodies up and down the East Coast and even out to California. Um, our company manages lakes and ponds ranging in size from Lake Winnipesaukee up in New Hampshire, um, Quinn Sigamon Lake in Worcester, um, all the way down to small golf course ponds and um, looking to manage at the four acre uh, pond on the Maplewood Country Day Camp. Um, brief kind of site characteristics. Um, we were first uh, involved Actually, our, a prior iteration of the company filed the previous notice of intent for um, Mr. Pinstein at Maplewood Country Day Camp back in 06. Was it the previous notice of intent? Or pre previously, which it was uh, denied. Yes, um, that was you? A, a oh, previous, as a different as yeah, a as a previous company. Yeah, 2006. 2006. Um, and at the time, um, the bylaw for uh, work being done in natural heritage and the ACAC uh, wasn't in place as recently has been uh, uh, changed. Um, in 2016 or 2016 or 2017, we were first contacted by Mr. Pinstein to kind of come out to the water body and start managing the um, excessive nuisance vegetation growth within the pond. Um, at that time, there was um, mar moderate to dense growth of water thread pondweed, a native uh, species, also species, uh, other species common were southern naiad, um, stonewort, low water milfoil. Again, all these are all beneficial native uh, aquatic macrophytes in uh, less densities, but with excessive growth, it can, uh, take over a pond and cause uh, accelerated eutrophication and um, increased water temperature. Increased water temperature leads to uh, further algal growth and um, that can lead to, um, as uh, cyanotox or cyanobacteria leading to neurotoxins, uh, the research on that is uh, developing. Um, it's good to manage also uh, the algal species within a water body. Um, also observed at the water body was um, some common reed, uh, Phragmites australis, um, that was along the northern bank adjacent to 106. Yeah. Um, and we're looking to manage or 
getting into the management of kind of the water body. We're looking to manage uh, a portion of the pond to create a more balanced ecosystem so that the water body isn't completely uh, have 100% bio volume throughout it uh, in by the end of the um, growing season and also managing the al algae species in addition to the uh, Phragmites growth. Um, the main tenets of the program are one, the installation of a submersed aeration unit, um, which is a land-based compressor that uh, pumps compressed air to diffuser stations that are um, submersed or submerged on and sink to the bottom of the uh, pond and the uh, compressed air increases circulation, increases the dissolved oxygen within the water body. Um, those are generally considered beneficial um, additions to any uh, management program. Additionally, we're looking for, uh, for approval for the use of aquatic herbicides, uh, specifically um, Amazmox, which would be applied foliarly via a uh, small um, a, uh, backpack sprayer um, to the leaves of the uh, Phragmites. Um, additionally, we're seeking approval for the use of Diquat and Endothol um, for the uh, uh, submersed vegetation growth in portions of the water body to uh, maintain open water habitat. Um, uh, and last but not least is uh, algal, uh, algae, alg algicides, there we go, um, uh, uh, peroxide-based, cropper-based um, algicides well used more commonly in the state um, were um, uh, determined not to be a fit based upon the state listed turtles, turtle habitat that the pond resides in. So we removed the algae species, or the uh, copper-based algicides, went with a peroxide base, um, which um, will be applied um, periodically throughout the growing season when the conditions get, um, when dense algae condi conditions are observed um, to maintain kind of a low density uh, of the algal species within the water body. Um, all the products proposed are EPA registered and additionally registered with the Department of, uh, Massachusetts Department of Agricultural Resources. Um, just to give a brief oversight of the oversight of these types of projects were subject to the Wetlands Protection Act, the bylaws, um, the town's bylaws. Um, a site-specific license to apply chemical is obtained prior to any uh, treatments uh, or her herbicide or algicide treatments for uh, from the Mass DEP Office of Watershed Management, um, as was noted on the uh, uh, issuance with the or with the issuance of the file number from Southeast Regional Office. Um, again, uh, also all of our applicators are. Um, licensed through the Mass Department of Agricultural Resources as uh, certified um, applicators. And um, all these management techniques have, uh, these management techniques have been uh, included and reviewed by, uh, or included into the uh, Generic Environmental Inter Impact Report prepared uh, for the uh, Massachusetts Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. EOE back then. Yeah, the, I, I was, <laughs> now it was a different day. Yeah, it's and we all change. Um, um, so they don't revive, um, require further MISA review. Um, Are there MIPA? Uh, MIPA, yes. Um, and when I think that's kind of. Uh, we did uh, a brief alternatives analysis of other uh, management techniques that are described in the GEIR. Um, bottom weed barriers um, can be applicable for very small areas um, of, uh, uh, to manage uh, localized plant growth around docks, um, but outside, but in uh, greater areas, it ends up uh, 
being a detriment to the ecosystem because it limits the interaction between the uh, sediment and the uh, invertebrates. Um, physical harvesting was not recommended um, and it would likely due to it only providing kind of a season's worth of relief from the um, vegetation growth very minimally or not at all impacting the algal um, issues. Um, there are no proven biological controls um, for the invasive or nuisance species at uh, Maplewood. Um, unlike Connecticut, that ha allows the use of uh, triploid grass carp mass. Uh, it is not permitted in the state, so that's a technique that we uh, can't use. Um, dredging is a significant financial and kind of logistical undertaking. Um, was done back in the 80s. 90s. 90s, early 90s at the water body. Um, and it can be good, but again, that is a significant financial uh, undertaking um, for the work and also for the permitting and kind of getting approval of. Um, and the doing nothing is always a management technique that I um, uh, usually gloss over and kind of forget. Um, but doing nothing um, isn't recommended because uh, with the dense vegetation growth, um, the eutrophication of the water body will accelerate um, it, as the life cycle of a water body is to turn into a wetland. Um, open water habitat does, or open wa uh, water bodies do provide uh, valuable uh, habitat and should be maintained as such. And again, the invasive species uh, present on the North Shore um, they're non-indigenous to begin with and inherently uh, a nuisance and should be managed. And last but not least, the allergy, um, as uh, previously mentioned, with kind of the concerns about uh, uh, cyanobacteria and uh, toxic algae blooms, um, the research, research becomes more and more um, managing algae is, is uh, a important management uh, portion of kind of this plan. Um, I think something I just thought of at the end of I can actually just comment on your um, your report here. Do we know what um what Stoughton used on Long Pond for they had some management of No, we denied it um, in the town of Easton mm -hmm. and I didn't follow up with the town of Stoughton to see if they followed through. Okay. Yeah I'm just Okay, um, hey, well, I appreciate you giving me the opportunity to comment. Um, if you can hear from Dr. Mitchell first, he's mm -hmm. he's the brains in the operation. Absolutely. All right. Yeah. Although I understand you have a summary page that we're passing out. So yeah. I, if can I can get see? a copy of that, I didn't sure. get a copy of that. Okay. Oh, I did you read it? I did. Oh. <laughs> Good evening, the commission. My again, I'm Dr. David Mitchell. I'm an aquatic ecologist by education and by long experience, over 35 years, uh, doing lake canoeing in other parts of the country, also done ecological risk assessment. Um, I have been a certified lake manager since 1991. Uh, I've spent about 20 years as an adjunct professor at UMass Lowell teaching limnology, which is also lake science. Um, also, for your purposes, I've spent nine years on the Conservation Commission in Sturbridge. I spent 10 years founding and doing the Sturbridge Lakes Advisory Committee. So I understand that, again, some of this stuff is unusual for the Conservation Commission and sometimes needs some outside guidance in terms of how to interpret this because it doesn't line up as neatly with the Wetland Protection Act interests as other kinds of actions do. So with um, uh, Andrea arranged to have my services and basically my, my job here I see is to have looked over the site, went and had a site visit with Mr. Pinstein. Pinstein? Pinstein? Perfect. <laughs> I'm sorry. Andrea and actually Matt, you know, back in, in March, one of the coldest days I can remember for a while, and looked at over to kind of get a viewing for it, looked at the maps, looked at both this application and the other application. Again, try to get a, a feeling for the pond and its environment, and then look at the specific things mm -hmm. in the aquatic management program. Look at the four um, uh, options they looked at. They looked at uh, the uh, aeration, the herbicide treatment for the in-pond plants, the herbicide treatment for the, the uh, riparian uh, vegetation, and then the algicides, and then provide kind of an overall viewpoint, which I think you might see in this letter report in terms of where the you know where the benefits are, where some of the issues you may want to write, and I also included some recommendations because overall I think 
I see what you're doing tonight is to look over these options and see first of all whether they're acceptable to you and see you want to go further. But I think if you do need to go further and make these into a permittable document, there is more additional information that you probably want to request to the applicant. Mm -hmm. And I think the applicant would go that way anyway in terms of trying to refining some of the actual management. As you get into this, these are ideas they broach, I guess they could say that they've given you a little bit of a menu, but they haven't really given you the recipe. So some of the things you want to know, again, there's more in terms of the logistics, in terms of also um, how these will be done in a little more um, a tangible way, and also how they'll, they'll work together. Because you also know if this is a management program, it's got to kind of work together in terms of how is it going to be set up, what are the kinds of things, who's responsible, who might be, you know, what might the triggers be, because if they're looking for multiple actions over several years, there's got to be a reason why you're doing this. And then again, to try and see, who, uh, and I think even for the, um, the applicant, just looking in terms of areas where some of the things need to be shown to be um, perhaps more defined in terms of how effective they may be in actually treating that pond. So that's a big thing, a big picture in a nutshell. I'm not sure if you want me to provide a little overview of the pond. I think you've read it. It's a relatively small pond, 4.2 acres. It's man-made. It looked, was probably a gravel pit for money. And this is information, and again, if I'm misrepresenting the information, maybe you okay. can, can correct me. Um, it's been in existence for about 60 years. And it's been um, pretty successfully in terms of holding its own in terms of a pond, but there is a silt accumulation was leading to it. And the silt accumulation led to the dredging, I think, in 1995 after, you know, 35 years, materials go on. And mostly it looks like it's sand and gravel underneath, but as the silt grows up, that's where the plants go. And it's just shallow enough, the average is about 4.2 feet, um, was the estimate that's going to be the sunlight's going to get to the bottom. So where you have that combination of a rooting medium and you have light as well as nutrients, plants are likely to accumulate. So things that seems to be driving it, it's, there's no tributaries. It doesn't be a big runoff problem. You don't necessarily have a, an obvious tributary. I think it's groundwater movement uh, going down from the, uh, the north towards the south, towards the ACEC. And the level you see of the pond probably reflects the groundwater. I don't know how high it is right now, but it's pretty high uh, groundwater table. And that also gives them some leeway, I think, no, no pun intended, but <laughs> the ability to actually um, use what they have as structure in place where they have an outlet and they have the ability to put in what, these are basically wooden slot, they call them flash boards is the term, but they basically are wooden boards you put in to seal off the, the, the the outlet. So in that case, we'll get into that later. That's going to be a positive feature if that's a concern, because uh, that's a good safeguard. Um, the fish in the pond, I didn't know. We didn't identify it. Sounds like panfish to me and largemouth bass. Minnows, pumpkin seeds, bluegills, and largemouth bass might be good. Um, there seems to be, um, and I don't know with regard to the, the frogs and turtles that are in there. There are some in there, I'm sure would probably hang on the northern shoreline where there's more of a natural um, a vegetation and such. And we didn't talk much about waterfall, but I'm not sure with all the other possibilities around there, I'm not sure that would be the most attractive thing to waterfall. So in terms of uh, what they suggest, that's kind of the, the, the big, the big uh, overall. Current condition, I think Matt already described it pretty well, um, dense uh, macrophytes in many areas. Uh, we have a map that's about two years, going on three years old, that shows, um, again, these are not necessarily bad exotic invasive species, and they're kind of a natural assemblage, um, but anything gets to the point where you actually make it in, in tough for getting boats through are going to be a, um, uh, going to reduce the, uh, in certain ways, certainly reduces the ecological, probably recreational use of it, in certain ways also reduces the ecological. Um, there is a good medium between some open water habitat and some, um, some areas where there's these rooted aquatic macrophytes, that are just big plants. Um, the water quality issue is, I'm not, you know, that's something that will improve the overall appearance and, and, we, and you, as mentioned before, you'd want to prevent blue-green algal blooms from going in. That's one thing we have the least knowledge about in terms of the actual water quality. I think there's anecdotal mentioned somewhere a very um, poor water clarity at some point so that you know we don't know exactly what's causing but usually when you have nutrients in the water particularly nitrogen and particularly phosphorus 
Those are the things that lead to these phytoplankton, the floating algae and such. So that looks like that's somewhere in there. We don't know what the source of that is. That's another unknown. I don't know whether you need to know that right now, but that might be something that as you look for putting a good management plan together, you'd like to know more information. I think I've made some recommendations on that. Um, as we get this whole thing together, we had a little comments from the Mass uh, Natural Heritage Program that looked at the initial application, uh, kicked back a couple of kind of uh, um, requests to avoid the copper-based algicides and did not really endorse or had enough of a, a comment on biological, pardon me, bacterial adjuvants for them to not go through a massive review that I think, no would be long and painful. Um, so, but I don't know, they, we still need to come back with their comments on this revised plan and that will affect and, and, and will certainly be a consideration when you look at the final order conditions if you should, so go that way. And finally, again, your own town uh, bylaws, again, the necessary to put this into the waiver uh, for the standards, performance standards for area ACECs. It's your own thing, again, needs to be almost a discrete thing that also reflects and probably part of the, you know, I can see it having a narrative that's drawn from the a um, aquatic management plan. So that's a big, quick background of it. Um, I say I'll pause for you. Any questions at this point, or that I would kind of start going in towards the uh, the various management plans, or if there's any comments from the applicant or the at this um, point. Or? Well, since this project came before us, there was a pond. In the past that I experienced, I had no idea that it was your company that did the work, but the work to me was impressive uh, down in Wareham. Uh, which uh, we so uh, we work on over 350 water bodies in the state of Massachusetts alone. The one over near Markham. Not memorize them. Yeah, we did about 15 acres of it. Uh, uh, Aldrich, no, not Aldrich Mill. Um, um, it had a mill, real bad mill foil. Yeah, I can't. I, sorry, I just my, my only comment would be I happened to see it. I don't know three or four years ago in a magazine about the problem of it. About and my nephew spoke to it when they came home from the service. It was where they had they had grown up fishing there, learning to fish from from their mother, my sister, and you know outdoor things like that. And they couldn't do it anymore when they came home on leave. And then they went back in the service, and then they came home after again finding out it was you folks who cleaned it up and spoke of the difference of wow we can get the john boat in there now and get through when we can actually paddle and row and we can fish and they're teaching their kids now and the one big question again with no and again this is a three-year-old conversation a four-year-old conversation was you know was there any difference and, you know there was t they said there was no difference in the, the the quality of the pond as far as the, the fish that they were getting, the bait that they were using, the tackle, the various, you know, what laws worked, what worked, you know, 20 years ago, and what worked now. So, again, whatever it is that you did there, it, did, it seemed to work, so it, it, that said to me, well, this is this is a company that, that raised the trust level a little bit, so I think that's a, that was a positive for me, you know. So, so the, the underlying question that I think maybe we sort of work backwards from, which is sort of unusual but so if we do nothing to no further action no further action um what happens here and i'm not asking for certainty here but some level of what happens what's the time frame for it happening what are the ecological effects of that happening mm -hmm. well i think again what will happen is that over time silt will accumulate into that probably the weeds um I think the weed density will probably stay about the same. You haven't got the, the, the invasive species are ones you're particularly worried because they really have a competitive advantage and just take over and completely fall. Well said. Milfoil is, I mean, yeah. there's, there's good and bad milfoil too. Um, so you would see the conditions get a little bit worse. I, I, I think because you wouldn't be treating the water quality, that would probably stay the same. So it'd probably be much the same. Ecologically, at some point, when you get really dense, you, you change the nature of the pond, and actually the fish population does change, because uh, when you have really dense um, fish, uh, pardon me, uh, vegetation, actually largemouth bass and other things which are visual predators can't actually see their prey. There tends to be a clustering of panfish around the side, and they, you know they're almost protected by it. So you can actually get it where there's too much density. I mean, um, I'm not a big 
I'm not a recreational fisherman as much, but just in general, I think there's ecologically, I, I, I think that you like to have some combination of both open water and for um, um, vegetation. But in terms of, will this go down hill rapidly? Will this lead to really dire things? I don't think so, but it's not going to change. And it probably wouldn't change. It will, it will, it will go, but it will not go down. I mean, it will, it will decrease in utility, certainly, in terms of recreational and to a certain extent ecologically, but it will not lead to dire ecological cat catastrophe. So that, that's, right. that may answer your question. So. Yeah. I mean, we, we'd probably see a decrease in, you know, wildlife habitat eventually, or no? Well, I mean, I don't know how much wildlife habitat is afforded by that compared to what's all around it. Right. Um, I mean, it's an island in the ACEC, right. and I would think the habitat for a lot of different ha is much better served than in this kind of this th this particular thing. I don't see it as a rare resource. You know, sometimes things are more important because there's not much else around there. It's a refuge. But again, it doesn't have a connection to, it isn't upstream downstream connection. You know, there's not a flow through. I don't know how much, if anything, comes people, you know, if, if, it, if there's a biological invasion, it's going to come up from the swamp into the pond, not downstream. So, in that sense, it's not a, pos it's not a threat right now to the ACEC, I think. So, I guess that's kind of the viewpoint of it. I think mm -hmm. that, you know, it would, it would not get any better. We should not go to hell in a handbasket real quickly. I guess that's layman's terms. Um, yeah, I don't think I have any questions for you right now. If you want to continue? Sure. Um, I, I just, again, some comments on this, and you can follow if you're in the, the report or something. But again, aeration and some of this I'll try to make very quickly. Aeration is uh, generally beneficial for a number of things, one of which is simply providing enough oxygen for the wildlife habitat, particularly fish. Um, it increases how well bacteria can break down organic sediments, and in many cases it can reduce nutrient recycling, uh, which happens at a low DO. And again, the bubbling, the uh, evolution, I'm sorry, that was a really egregious use of a fancy word. The bubbling is sometimes thought to break up the, um, enhance the overall local water movement, prevents stagnation. Um, it's very common, it's relatively simple to use, fairly inexpensive, and again, compatible with other recreations. Um, some of the concerns, again, is right now we don't know if the, if the dissolved oxygen in the pond really is low. And since it's only four feet deep, the question becomes, is there already aeration coming from natural mixing with the atmosphere? And um, that's why I think, again, one of the things I suggest is looking at the bottom and getting a better idea of what the bottom profile is. There may be some deep holes. Um, when you s most see aeration is most effectively used is in deeper ponds, and particularly ponds that have low dissolved oxygen in the bottom. Sometimes these are the ones that are the thermally stratified. I mean, they basically are the ones that can hold trout or potentially that. And the, the air is, it, it, it is more commonly used as this. Um, one of the missed things is when you see bubbling coming up, you're actually not being effective. You actually want to make sure that you don't see bubbles up because you want to make sure they're, they're coming up in enough height that they're actually absorbed into the water before they actually get there. So four and a half feet may or may not. May, again, I think you'd have to size this a little bit carefully and perhaps do some dissolved oxygen studies to, to actually see if there's an issue there or not. Because I wouldn't want you spending money on something that wouldn't necessarily benefit. So that's, that's one of my concerns about doing it. Um, again, it's no different than putting uh, air into a aquarium. You know, if you switch off the bubbler, yeah. it, goes, it, it goes away. The, the, the benefits go away. So there's nothing that, that this leads to a permanent uh, solution. And again, with regard to phytoplankton blooms, there's been a mixed, I, I'd say, it's not a guarantee of reduced phytoplankton blooms. There are some cases where they've broken up surface blooms. In other cases, they've sucked in the nutrients and just actually made it a thicker pea soup. So again, it's site specific, and I wouldn't know until you get into that kind of thing. But you got to realize it's not a guarantee in that. Um, I, I guess does it um, if they were using the aeration in conjunction with some of the uh, the chemical treatments? They would be able to do that, that be... but they would probably stop the aeration during that period. Okay. One of the things I mentioned, if they do go through this, one of the, the things they do suggest I think is positive is they put the compressor with the building is and then run the hoses through the outlet. Mm -hmm. So they, they would have to figure out some way to remove the hoses if they're going to do chemical treatment and stop that outlet. Mm -hmm. 
So, um, but they can keep the compressor out of the buffer zone, it sounds like, in terms of that, and it's already got an electricity source, mm -hmm. so actually a new infrastructure is not going to be necessary, but they, they have to show where, again, those go and how they go through that. So, again, one of the things I suggested, again, the bathymetric map, and this could be something that could simply, it doesn't have to be terribly detailed, but it needs to have more information. I don't know what the basis of, for example, your comments about the average depth and the seven and how many measurements that was, but you'd like to do a little bit more to make, so you know how much de dissolved oxygen. You also get a better idea how much water's in the pond mm -hmm. when you know the contours, and that will be useful not only for this, but later on with the chemicals, if the algicides or herbicides are used, to dose it in terms of what the effective volume is. Um, I'm sorry, I just want to interject here. We have Rory for maybe another five minutes max. Um, okay. I'll be happy. I mean, uh, <laughs> I, will, I, I will be back. I mean, I, right. just, I have to jump out for a call and then we can come back and we can take an adjournment for, you know, however long it takes or whatever you guys want to do. Can we continue the hearing to the next available opportunity, which could be later tonight? It could be the next meeting? Um. Well, uh, you, <coughs> have, you, you have the, the comments of Dr. Mitchell since mm -hmm. Thursday, which I haven't had a chance to respond to. My comments came in just this afternoon. Um, my comments are really straightforward. Yeah, Basically, I mean, we um, need some more information on this. There's a whole lot more information. Yeah, there's some and waiver requirements that need to right, be Right, yeah, and I, again, I wanted to wait until we had natural right. heritage right. fine, right. so we weren't trying to uh, guess what or Maybe the time is better used if you ask me whether you have questions about what I'm suggesting. I, and, and also, and I know it's only five minutes, so I'll give you the choices. You definitely get what you can from David, but um, the basic question is, you guys, what's your gut on um, whether or not whether or not chemical treatment is something that you would entertain, um, or if not, um, then don't. If you if you wouldn't entertain it as an option, then let's not go down the path of getting the technical information we need to make sure it works. All right, so I guess that. Um, so we need all three of you to answer that. <laughs> no, yeah, I guess the question for you then yeah, related to, to the chemicals is, you know, considering, I mean, we're in an ACEC, but like you said, it's kind of right. an island of insignificance ecologically within that ACEC. <laughs> Please, you probably fixed the one. <laughs> 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 I love that place. Well, lately, yeah, it's a compliment. That's <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, but, like, I guess if they were to use some of these chemical treatments that they've outlined, do you think there would be any broader impacts outside of the pond itself? Um, I think, again, probably the, the answer is I do know Solitude and ACT and IEP and all the variations before it. They know how to do that correctly. You need to make sure, I mean, you have a licensed applicator and the EPA has very clear instructions about what dosages are, and I have uh, confidence in those. And I think the thing is to make safeguards. And I think what makes this perhaps a little bit better, you, you know, in most cases, the herbicides are fairly effective at the, the target plants. They don't go too far. But just because people will say that's an ACEC, I would say you want to make sure that the flashboards are operable and they hold water. You could even sandbag the, um, the outlet beyond that to double carry. So in this case, and since you don't have stormwater coming in or big tributaries, you can hold the water for a longer period of time. So you can use actually lower doses and hold the water to allow that to occur. So that's one of the advantages of that. One of the things I think that we'll need to add more information for is you're targeting X number of acres or X number percentage of yes. that. And given that it's a big basin, how are you going to prevent, the, I guess, the migration of material off into that? So that's usually done by the form of the um, pesticide or putting in bar actual barriers. Yes, I mean, on a half, on a four acre water body, the barrier is, um, I, I wouldn't uh, recommend that. Um, again, the herbicides are heavier than water. They sink down to the bottom where the plant growth is. Um, the treatments will be done when, Plant biovolume is probably 25 to 50 percent, maybe 60, 70 percent, um, through the water column, so that there is um, plant biovolume that will take up the. Um, and another great way to ensure that the water, the herbicide application stays where it is, is um, as opposed to broadcast broadcast 
spraying it across the surface of the water. You're injecting it into the water, so you're um, so it's mixing with the water and getting it's uh, not migrating as. Um, sorry, sorry, just because yep. time crunch. Um, I'm definitely open to it as a potential okay. solution. Yeah, I, I have not. Uh, there's nothing here that's been presented in either the written materials or the testimony here this evening that would preclude me from continuing to pursue this as an option. Right. I, I think there's I a found lot no of information. I, right. I found no fatal flaw, but it's right. got to be carefully conditioned. Yeah. Right. Right. And, okay. and, I, and I think that was mostly this, the information that came up from my reading of the, the proposals in, in your report was just timing, what right. happens when this one works but that one doesn't, how do we adjust to that type of thing. Um, I want some more information about the safety of these. I mean, there's hundreds of kids that are using this um, this body of water uh, on a daily basis for about 10 weeks. Does it continue? Does it automatically just continue? It was out of core. Um, if you were to leave, um, the conversation, it can't be used as part of the deliberation. Any further conversation? Any further conversation can't be used as part but of the But if he comes back and they're still here, we you can continue. Okay, right. so. Correct. I'm willing to stay if that's, a, I don't know what your guys' yeah, I, are. So yeah. I'd, you guys want to hang around for a little while to see if it gets Yeah, and, and just to kind of answer your question regarding the safety, um, all the proposed herbicides and algicides have no contact use restrictions. Um, so that if little Johnny goes swimming, um, there isn't any. Like no. <laughs> just wanted to get that in before. No, no. <laughs> Yeah, no, no, no. And you sounded, you sounded. Yeah, I, as I said, my, my experience with with that was, yeah. and then also with with Stoke, I know some thank you, Dr. some Charlie's yeah. friends, I know some local county fishermen who spoke of the Stoke side versus the Eastern side, and they were happier over there. So I would I'm definitely interested in hearing more about. So, um, so yeah, there's no deliberation. There's no there's, there's no official. Okay. All right. Great. All right. So I guess we'll, yeah. yeah, if you guys want to hang and we'll get some We could probably, we could, we could, we could start talking yeah. about it. Yeah, that's a discussion. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. It's a, it's a discussion. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. Um, that's fine. Thanks for your Oh, yeah. I think we should have a discussion. My phone? Yeah. We should have a discussion. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> no, no, oh. uh, no vote yep. is needed. Okay. No. Oh. We're going to come back to the conversation on um, this. Uh, Maybe pod with. management. Were you here for? I'm management? here for something else. Am I wasting my time with the Eastern Mobile Home Park? Oh. 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 This. Uh, the. The hearing is the the um, enforcement. Enforcement is later on in the agenda. Okay. I just want to make sure it's still happening. Nobody else is here. Okay. Yeah. It, it will be. I mean, the plan is to. Yeah. To have it happen. Yeah, it's just as soon as it gets back. Okay. Well, thank you for letting us know you're yeah. here. We can take it out of order. Yeah. Yeah. Hold on, sure. Uh, tell us more. Where guys coming up? Sure. Um, Ways School, Ice Creek Design. Yeah, I think it's the BL official. Yeah, this is a this is a discussion. So you can do it. Then I can vote. I'd just like to comment for the record about the incredible patience of these two ladies from the phone. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Traveled from far away and then got stuck in our no, quite a quagmire, as it were. Very interesting and so, very relevant okay. to our studies. So I, I appreciate you. Yeah. Patience, yeah. though, is, it is uh, noted. So, um, yes, these are, these are two students from the Conway School of um, Dance and Design from Northampton, Massachusetts. Um, this was the, uh, the award that you guys um, applied for, put some short money toward, um, and these two students picked your project for the, for the semester project. Yes. So um, rather than me speak, um, they can tell you more about the project. Our, and Wayne our, is here because it's, um, it, also, it also has the, uh, um, we, this is, he helped with, with, with this application and our CPC application. Okay, there it goes, I had it. Sorry about the noise. I made a note on this to ask if I had him here. I had a very specific question. I can't find it, but I'll find it. Okay. 
Uh, all right, so we all, um, you know, went on a slight walk today, but really, yeah, why don't we start yeah. with you guys? Yeah, so I think um, Martha was going to tell you just a little bit about kind of how our, the whole project is going to work, um, and then we have a couple things we wanted to ask you about as well. Great. Yes. Um, so this is, we're in the first week of the project, the first meeting, the client meeting with you, mm -hmm. um, and um, sort of in the goals formulation process, so we're going to clarify what the goals of the project are and what the deliverables of the project will be. And our timeline moving forward is we hope to hold one to two community meetings. Um, we want to, that's actually one thing we would like to discuss this evening is uh, who we see as a targeted audience for this community meeting um, and get public feedback on the project. Um, so we hope to have that happen ideally before May 2nd, but uh, sometime before May 15th, yeah. approximately. Um, and so any time between now and yes. Yes. ideally May 2nd, but yeah. the, the, the hard there. deadline would be the Right, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so the way our design process will work is we are going to do some rigorous analysis, uh, which will factor in your goals. And then on May 24th, we have uh, essentially a design charrette where we present three different kind of alternative plans for Tufts Farm that factors in uh, sort of an ecological analysis and your goals and community feedback. Um, and that is presented to you, the clients, as well as three professionals, so other landscape architects and planners and ecologists for feedback. And those are really rough ideas, so they're meant for you to um, sort of say what works for you and what doesn't work. Um, and then between May 24th and June 22nd, we'll work on a final design and we will make a plan set that then will be delivered to you um, that will include our analysis and a final design and design details. Um, and so, one of the things we also noted earlier today is that um, we know that that is a tough date for people to come to that presentation, and so we can also make those alternatives available right. to you via email or something if there's other people that want to have a chance to um, yeah. <laughs> um, have a say. Because um, that's it's a it's a good chance when they're still really rough, yeah, and it's when they're in a really rough form, so it's like a nice time when they're still really tangible that we can kind of like use those as a baseline yeah. for working towards something that works for everybody. And generally speaking, in those few weeks before and after, we can be in close communication. Mm -hmm. So if we ready something, you can read it and say, no, that's yeah. not what we want at all. Yeah, okay. right. Yeah. Um, and so because we're still in this goals articulation process, like kind of the way that this works, like Martha was saying, is we do a lot of analysis. So a lot of our design is going to be informed by the site conditions. But we also want to make sure that um, from here on out, we are working towards something that really adequately meets uh, and like serves the functions that we're hoping that the site is going to serve. Um, and so we wanted to hopefully hear from each of you a little bit more and Wayne as well. Um, maybe just individually what your kind of vision might be um, for what Tufts Farm could be and perhaps you could also address um, what you see as some of the biggest issues on the site. Um, and that could help us sort of work out a list of our main goals um, that the project's going to try to meet. Right. Um, do you want to start there? Sure, that would be great. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, that's a good question. You know, I, I feel like the uh, the site walk today. You know, yeah. one of my concerns was parking, but we kind of I think we have a pretty good idea of um, what some good parking solutions are going to be. Yeah. Uh, you know, potentially using the um, the access road for the Ames Gun Club uh, as some parking areas, and, and and then we could have two access points through the rear fields or through the farm itself. Sure. Um, uh, I, I guess, you know, one of the challenges that I could see is uh, making it, you know, friendly for pedestrians and others yeah. while being farm friendly at the same time and yeah. how to how to manage that. Yeah. Um, let's see. You know, it being connected to some conservation land with a nice trail system I, I would, you know, I, I can see some of the value of adding some, you know, some, some loops throughout there around fields, through some of the, the, the woodland there. Um, 
Those are kind of the, a few of the things that, that, that jump out to me. Uh, Michael? Well, yeah. oh, I have a quick question. Yeah, sure. Um, and maybe all of you might have a different answer to this, but in terms of parking, how many cars do you think you would want accommodated um, by the parking either on the site or also on the um, road to the fan club? Well, mm -hmm. what, are the, what, what do the other areas have? Not, mm -hmm. not saying NRT, but right. okay, let's look at you know, what's well, always overcrowded, the top of yeah, Borderland Bay, right. Lincoln. Right. And there's what, maybe 20 cars there on a busy Saturday morning, and okay. that's packed. Right, yeah. but that's also a you know, yeah. major right. recreation. So some time. of the but smaller ones, I know like Monty's Pond doesn't have any, so nobody can right. really get up there to look at it. <laughs> right. is, that's one of my He's favorites. He's got to risk it on the side of West Elm. Um, yeah. Town Forest on Bay and Randall. Maybe what, fit one or two. Mm -hmm. Three maybe. Or two or three Backed or four in, inside Militia Park. Yeah. So yeah. I guess. Right. I, I guess my initial thought a was dozen? maybe like six. Six sure. to a dozen? Six to a dozen. Six I guess dozen if you're going to make, yeah. if you're gonna yeah. make multiple uh, plans, yep. I guess right. that would probably exactly. give us different. Well, and I think you know where we're thinking of having the parking, I think there's plenty of real estate there. Because we spoke yes. of the four right when you come in at the farms, the current <laughs> right. stand sale location, and then that, that again, that contiguous area between the you know the two town owned lands you right. know that right. where that right. where that um, berm was of millings right so there's there's plenty there to work with that's yeah. up to you no, that's, that's perfect. i'm that's not good, good at that that's a good i um, think that's a good spectrum to be working things with. we want or things that i think that people in this town will want mm -hmm. that I, I i don't know what we're calling it or what mr luke called it we i heard life tree family tree that oh, the yeah, big yeah, white yeah. oak that mm -hmm. like that really needs to be worked in especially what would happen mm -hmm. up at the clock farm tree um, oh, yeah. And it's just beautiful, and it, it needs to be incorporated. And you know, the same thing like Steph's, uh, Stefan said. So, you know, so paths that are, you know, these don't have to be things you can drive a you know manicured golf cart down, right. but to but to connect them to connect. Hey, I'm here to buy some eggs and look at some goats. And mm -hmm. hey, I've heard about this tree that the one at the clock farm's gone. So we want to go check this out now. Yeah. And then hey, can uh, how does that segue into? You know the the other ones is like step on said to connect to our other things, and and while we were out there, there was something, you know, when talking about different things that that Mr. Luke might want, and they may need they want to do to um, generate income and stuff. But long term things, yeah, long term, I'd like to see um, a long term uh, planting plant sure. to keep it going. It doesn't. We don't have to plant 500 apple trees today, or or, or six peach trees. It doesn't have to right. be anything that formal, but it just could be. Yeah, you know, even berries. even a yeah. rough even a rough outline of hey, this this is our goal. This is what we have for funds, and mm -hmm. maybe try to tie in with some of the other with the NRT resources, mm -hmm. the scouts, and the various other ag groups that we do have have resources and kind of make a, try to make a, a cumulative effect because we do have a lot of good resources here, mm -hmm. and that. I hadn't looked at that property in forever, and getting yeah. out there today, it, it just has a really lot of unique it features that, mm -hmm. that do need to be uh, highlighted, and, and yeah, so people can see it and enjoy. Mm -hmm. I mostly grew up kind of around the corner. I didn't even yeah. know. Yeah, you know, that's funny. <laughs> now, a question I had here, I was looking okay. in your description, and I just want to make sure I'm reading it right. So, you, so you, you guys are saying you're estimating the value of your project at Twenty five thousand, but we're only committing seven eight hundred. Is that like we're getting like twenty five thousand dollars worth of work for seven eight hundred bucks? Or um, that is a actually a um, question for yeah. The, so that manager. was negotiated before Wayne. we came Wayne. in. But Wayne, yeah, that that's, that is the way it was. But essentially, am I so I'm reading yeah. that right? Yes. So we're getting twenty five yes. grand worth of stuff for seven. Okay, <laughs> all right, just making sure we're I'm reading students, it correctly. So it's entirely that's good. I like that math. That's good math. <laughs> It, it, and the reason it's like getting your hair cut at the beauty school. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Wrong with yeah. That? yeah. 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 <laughs> no, hey. We might mess up. But no, you usually do you want to see my idea of a design? Yeah. That's my design, so I trust that they'll do a much better job. Yeah. Exactly. This is, yeah. Um, the, wow. there's, there's the big tree and my paths. So Beautiful. I trust your work. Yeah. Um, well, and I guess, you know, just watch my kids climb on, on the walls, yeah. and I think Andrew, you might have pointed out the barbed wire. Uh, oh, yeah. But, yeah. but I guess all part of finding that balance between yeah. functioning for yeah. and totally. finesse here yeah. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I know he's using electrified fences for corralling some of the animals now. If he uh -huh. needs to continue that in the future, I, you know, Crescent Ridge Dairy Farm comes to mind. <laughs> they have like a vinyl white 
kind of farm fence, and then behind okay. that, like a foot or two, yeah. they have their actual oh, electric sure. um, yep. fence. Uh -huh. So that way, the you know the animals can be controlled, and they're close enough to for kids to go. No, no, that, that's a good. I think that's a good mix, and that says, hey, Mike knows what he's doing to keep the animals where they need to be to do their yeah. thing. Yeah. But yeah. Then we have these design people who are gonna, as you said, the aesthetics of Crescent Ridge are certainly better than that. So <laughs> mm -hmm. nowhere to go but up, and you mm -hmm. know that's we're hoping that's what you're good at. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, and, and I guess also just um, you know also showcasing the the functionality of yeah. the uh, of the farm. Okay. Great. Yeah. Um. Um. Stakeholders in town. I mean. The Department of Rec, or yeah, what other rec boards do we have? That's it. So I, I would say if you, it'd be recreation, agricultural commission. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe the NRT would have. Yeah, the, some, I'm sure, some yeah, they have. Or, oh, they have input. some feedback, and I'd I'd like to check with obviously with our own with, with Chris Patrick. Yeah, Eagle and Jonathan Scouts. Jonathan Chase and yeah. see about the Scouts, see what yeah, their input. Yeah, because they're always looking for Eagle Scout projects. And, and their yeah, projects have been really Part great lately, so. Could potentially be, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. Eagle Scout project related, especially anything oh, like wonderful. trail related. Yeah, yeah. that's uh, great. Yeah, they're always looking for, they're very active in town with, okay. with the conservation land, which is great. I would say DPW because okay. um, they might be a maintenance uh, yeah. practicality. Right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and historic. Garden Club? Yeah, great. Yeah. Yeah, they're, they're very active in town too. wife is on that, I believe. Yeah. Yeah. I think so, yeah. That's Let's great. See. Okay. Uh, Did you guys, um, uh, they didn't actually articulate it um, clearly, but I think, I think I heard it in both their statements that it's a working farm. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, and you're and you're talking about add-ons to the working farm. Right. Right. But but keeping it, keeping it even in its small scale, you know, gentleman farm type. Mm -hmm. While I have another job, mm -hmm. um, it's still you know it's still a farm first, mm -hmm. and so right. it has to work that. Right. Yeah. yeah. I guess maybe a <laughs> improved placement of that farm stand, not on. Uh, on sure. You know, not right corner. on the road. Yeah. Well, or even like like you know like it's he was cool. saying about 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 crops, so you can combine the combine the two things. Uh huh. Uh huh. In, in new planting, so let's get some blackberries and some raspberries. They right. go crap. Right. They grow quick. They're great boundaries. They're good. They're, or, you know, they fit a lot of. Be open yeah. to some like community gardens they, uh, there, like uh, they have on like they, on the uh, fox farm area of sheep pasture. Mm -hmm. We they have fill a lot of punch lists. Wheaton Farm. We don't we don't always sell off all mm. the plots, but okay. this is a different part different of town. Area town yeah. Yeah, yeah, you never know. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Or like the other thing I was wondering in that same vein is like maybe thinking if you're talking about berries or an orchard, like a pick your own situation, sure. or like some yeah. kind of like engagement in that right. way. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah. And then I just. Lost my other question. No, and again, and it doesn't all have to be. You know, we realize, as I said, it's it's a gentleman's farm, and yep. you yeah. know that isn't his sole career. So right. you know, some right. that's kind of catch as catch can, and exactly. it's all not going to get done in you know six months. Right. Yeah, one right. of my impressions today was that there would be a balancing of the town's goals and the current tenant, but that might change in five sure. or 10 or 15 yeah, years. Right. Yeah, the town's gonna to be here for a long time. Yeah. Yeah. Right, and the yeah. timeline of the project and the crop, so it seems like that maybe part of the plan having really designated mm -hmm. spaces and then the farmer farms within those spaces, mm -hmm. but for the paths to maintain right. functioning. and mm -hmm. sure. Right, so the idea of having the master plan, it's like that sort of what stays true no matter who the operator yeah, right. of the farm is right. and that you have this guideline um, that's sort of, yeah, it sort of outlines and articulates the expectations of whoever the next leaseholder might right. be. Mm -hmm. um, on a more specific level, there is that one building that was referred to as a, the kennel um, that I think <laughs> is due to be demolished. It, it, yeah, any day. Yeah. Um, any day, okay. Right. Now, is there an expectation that a building um, would be eventually put in place to replace it or is that going to be demolished and assumed he oh, asked gone. for a um, he asked for a possible petting station okay that um, I don't know that, that that's an option okay um, that if rather than have the um, 
people go to you know his working paddock area or certainly not into his not into his barn right yeah that they might have a they might have a the goats might have a a little enclosure okay um yeah winslow shelter. farm in norton sure. has a thing like that yeah no yeah. okay uh, oh, that was that was an i don't i don't think we've ever talked about anything more large than that he doesn't he doesn't need any more okay. functional space okay but that shade shelter you know outdoor right. petting area right. came up okay oh, that's a good point uh, it doesn't have to be right there either great yeah we just just um I just wanted to know if um, if there should be a design that mm-hmm. makes space for a building of a similar footprint, or if that's going to be demolished and kind that of left. Gone. Okay. It, and, and in the future, there might be an interest in having something there as the property evolves. Yeah, right. Yeah. right. Maybe if there's more livestock, it's more intensive, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. more chicken, more eggs. Mm-hmm. It might make sense, but okay. not in the immediate term, but as a sure. long-term goal, it might okay. evolve that direction. Okay, mm-hmm. so maybe we could at least create some indicators for where that would be a possibility. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chicken coops is a great example mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because um, there, uh, his flock could certainly be larger than the little bit of uh, spot he has next to the barn. Mm-hmm. And he had those three mm-hmm. um, sheds down below yeah. in yeah. what we call the, you know, the storage area. Yeah, right. Okay. But that may or may not be the best place for the coops. Yeah. 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 One thing I just want to clarify but that mm-hmm. I am hearing is that now when you pass the property, it really reads as a private home and most people wouldn't pull in, but we really want to maybe have signage or like change the public face of it so that there mm-hmm. is, it's as if you're driving past Flyaway Pond and you might know to pull over and park. Mm-hmm. Is that correct? Um, yeah, I think that would be. Okay. Yeah, I mean, the most, to me, what makes the most common sense, both from from a public safety mm-hmm. aspect, like yeah. Stefan said, of the stand being on the side of the road. Mm-hmm. Would be in if we had, we had talked earlier about making a small parking there of yeah. four four cars, let's say, or four large cars. Yeah, um, would be to maybe make the four spots and then put the put the stand perhaps at the back with signage yeah. out mm-hmm. of the street, almost almost like a guardrail, if if you will, so that you see the guardrail as the sign, so you, uh-huh. so people know to pull in, but mm-hmm. that way it gets them off the street, so the vehicle is in the doors and open and on that curve, yeah. you know, or yeah. the same if young kids are getting out to yeah. right. to look at the thing while while some while a parent wants to either engage the farmer or just kind of figure out what the heck they want to buy right yeah you know, right. They're, they're, they're more safe and then it'll also the same for the dpw to sure. as andrew said to, to manage the, the little area they you know they can just when they're plowing that street they can just catch it on the way by so mm-hmm. yeah i like the way you put it yeah yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. So. i think the size of the signs and how prominent it is yeah um should probably evolve based on how much public uh interaction happens in any given time period at one point, we were saying, let's have farm days a couple times a year. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and now we're also talking about, gee, if we know, you know, if, if you knew it was a town property, maybe you'd feel comfortable just dropping in. Right. right. You know, I think you have to get some sense of that balance yeah. Yeah. of, yeah. Um, right. it is definitely a town property and it should be noted as such, right. but, but get a sense um, of how often because there, it's also private residence, right? right. And yeah. I, you know, there's a way to balance that, and I don't know what it is. Yeah. Yep. Oh, the the audience, Mr. Chair. What way? <laughs> Charlie. Yes, sir. The, the road going to the uh, Ames Rifle Range is town property. Right. Mm-hmm. So you could go up that road, and there's plenty of places on the left hand side of that road you could make parking. Area. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, we um, during our site walk today, we we made that observation too. Yeah, that's a great point. Yeah, there's there's. Kind of by that seed, there. like that by that cedar grove. Yeah, it's right yeah, there. Yeah. yeah. Which um, also gives you something nice to look at. Do you mind introducing yourself for the recording? Oh. What? Oh. Mind introducing yourself for the recording? Oh. <laughs> Charlie, Heath, 63 Depot Street, Southeast. Thanks, Charlie. <laughs> um, anything else you want to add to the discussion? No, about? So this discussion, no. Okay. <laughs> Does this commission serve Southeast, and is that a different town? <laughs> Too. It's like a different kind of <laughs> oh, it Depends is. On who you ask. I know that's what we're gathering. It's a different um, zip code, it's, it's a, except for the island. <laughs> yeah. On um, that, sort of on that same vein, 
One of the other questions we had is that um, when we do have a public meeting, mm -hmm. if any of you have any specific information that you would like to hear from the public about any you know if there's like a way that we should be kind of gearing the conversation right. or if yeah, other like, like, like information that you would love yeah. we don't like know about know. the demographics so much mm -hmm. of easton or mm -hmm. the climate around recreational right. land like right. right is that why people oh. move here or something yeah. oh yeah <laughs> yes absolutely uh -huh. we have tons and tons and tons of open space yeah. and yeah, lots, we of, lots of parks lots of conservation land mm -hmm. um that's definitely I, I think one of the big draws of mm -hmm. the town um, I, I guess one of my questions would be like, you know, we're going through this project. The idea is to, to improve it and get more people to check yeah. it out and enjoy the, the, the property and the trails. Mm -hmm. I guess what, what would people want to see? What, what yeah. would the public want to see? That What would make them, you know, visit right. this property on the way home or, or on the weekends? or Absolutely. That kind of mm -hmm. That's great. Um, because, I mean, that road does get tons of traffic. Right. Um, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right. Um, and then, so it seems like we have some some specific stakeholders that we would want to target to have attend that meeting. Um, but besides that, we would also want it to be open to the general public. Mm -hmm. um, so we would want to identify with you all a good time and date and also a location where yeah. we could hold a meeting um, that could we kind of wouldn't necessarily know how many people are going to show up. Right. Um, as well as advertising. And then, to... right. So then, and then we would also need to, um, yeah, have a method for getting that out to the public. You guys probably have a better idea for the most effective ways to do that. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I can, I can work with that. Great. Okay. Yeah. I can work with it. Um, in terms of the meeting date, our Conservation Commission meeting is May 6th. Um, would you like to have it at the Conservation Commission meeting, or would you like to have a, se or would you be available for a separate night? Um, I will say it probably makes sense to do it on a separate night. Anything like that? I, it, I, well, I guess it just depends on what's on the agendas, but all right. things... Because where would you think you'd have it for? A, we have it down in the either the downstairs down or Frothingham, probably. Right. Yeah. Right. right. I mean, maybe maybe we could shoot to have it on May second. <coughs> what day that we just a little over two weeks? It's a Thursday. Sure, it's probably doable. Yeah. Um, Oh, that's only two weeks away. Jeez, time right. or or maybe. I mean, that's we fine. Can, that's great. We can do it's that. It's just though. amazing. <laughs> Do you think that would give people enough time on the other? Is that enough? Yeah. I mean, uh, there's certainly the advantage, the advantage to um, having it before town meeting allows us to oh, yeah. talk to people about yeah. this project. Mm -hmm. Right, right. Town Which, meeting? The 20th. 20. May 20th. Later on in the agenda, we have to talk about how Conservation Commission has a meeting scheduled for the 20th. Yeah. Which <laughs> doesn't really work. Right. <laughs> then we have the town of the, the elections next Tuesday, the 23rd. So yeah. it'll be between those two things, so that's kind of good. Yeah. I can, I can um, if you guys have a chance, I can, if I'll pull, I'll poll Conservation Commission members for the, the first, the second, that's Wednesday, Thursday, and then um, the 6th, 7th, 8th of the following week. Oh, well, not the six. Not gonna do the six. Yeah. Seventh or eighth, the following week. Yeah. Let's just let's just limit to the first or the second, maybe. Okay. You have too many options in here. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And nobody going anywhere. Well, I'm, the the reason the seventh has some attractiveness mm -hmm. um, is that one of our commissioners is in Florida, so if we get him back for the six, we might still have him for the seventh. Mm -hmm. But the if we try to do it the week before, we might have lost him. The um, I see. I, I do see your point. May seventh is a Tuesday. I, do see your uh, point. I don't yeah, have a so problem with that at this point. You don't? Uh, no. That's my exactly only problem is back-to-back nights is going to be, you know. Daddy duty. Yeah. Fair. That's going to be. Just, I think the uh, the guild team might come out. Yeah. yeah please. Uh, we're on the public transit. I've always been interested in the like, farm situation is seasonal. Like, okay. Uh, Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, hay wagon lines. Yeah, yeah. Like that. That's a really great Pumpkin point. Pack. Yeah. Some capacity for they sort of. Cross. Yeah, cross. you're right. 
Definitely. That's a good point. Christmas. Mm -hmm. uh, and not secular, you know. St. <laughs> 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 Patrick's Day. We're going to, to, Day. We're going to Evergreen. I'm telling you, that tree. <laughs> I know that tree. That that's the ticket. Yeah. Right there was there. great tree. Uh, there was what? How long was that thread? Was like over a hundred posts on Facebook. Oh, for the when that happened about the clock farm. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Wow. Um, so, yeah, that's and and the, and that would be big with the uh, director of planning and zoning, Mister uh, mm -hmm. Strange. Yeah. Tim and Strange would. Uh, Do you want to get any feedback from Wayne? Um, unless he has anything to add. Um, you have anything to add because yeah. <laughs> we haven't. I had swimmer. Oh, uh, it comes down to themes for me. Uh, okay. I'm sensing that there's uh, access and connection. Yeah. Uh -huh. Or still barking. There <laughs> is public and private. Yeah. Uh -huh. um, and there is uh, use and evolution. Sure. It's time sort of seeing things sort of bundle out into the three general categories. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really good way to put, put it. it. Yeah. That is a good way to that's put helpful. it. That's helpful. Yeah, because yeah, like Mike, Michael said earlier, it's not all going to happen at once. It's going to be yeah. some kind of staged yeah. approach. Yeah. To, mm -hmm. to and on that note, um, if we were in our final plan to make some temporal recommendations, are you seeing this as like a five-year plan or a 20-year plan <laughs> uh, or some, you know, somewhere in between or outside of that? Well, I guess just knowing how the, the board functions and the budget and everything, <laughs> probably at least a five-year plan. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, honestly, part of that could be like, you know, X, Y, and Z part of the scope would be mm -hmm. great Eagle Scout projects. Mm -hmm. and, right. and then and that could, and th those could get banged out in a year, potentially, right. uh, depending on yeah. who's coming up through the scouts and, mm -hmm. and that kind of thing. But, yeah. having, but having those yeah. kinds of things, you know, almost teed up as a, yeah. as a project uh, could be pretty nice. Right. Okay. Yeah. okay. I would go to the longer term yeah. as well. I mean, there's kind of short yeah. term. I, I consider five years to be kind of short term. Right. Short -term. Yeah, yeah, for sure. But twenty might give us if you're if you're interested in creating or orchard orchards. Yeah. Yeah. Orchards. Yeah. You know, that's a longer, longer term. term. Mm -hmm. okay. So you, if you're really only interested in a five year term, do you want to have orchards there? Well, yeah. Why did you just preclude it? Right. No, so, yeah, good point, good point. Yeah. Or, right, or is the time frame about the implementation, right, like or is it also of, about ma a maintenance recommendation? Yeah. But like, we yeah. keep coming back to the oak tree, so there is a component of oh, yeah. mm. planting for 100 years, you know, yeah. like that, and that oh, can yeah. be oh, part for of sure. the public yeah. yeah. buy-in. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Um, do you have any input to add <laughs> regarding um, a vision for Tufts Farm that you would like us to consider. I'm sure these guys have covered everything. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well put. There it oh, is. Wow. Yeah. There it is. See? Majestic. Yeah. Um, I like yeah, it better we, than the we, clock farm. We lost that tree over a clock. See? Wait, but is that the tree? that I saw the stump of? No. Yeah. No. no. I saw... But it was similar oh, to this. it might it was, be. Like, it's near, yeah, the, right near the soil fields yeah. over there? Yeah. Yeah. There's yeah. a big... We walked through that and I was like, look at that huge <laughs> tree. Why that did that tree, tree get cut down? <laughs> That's amazing. That's amazing that on a yeah, very short tour of Easton we saw... There's photos of that tree all over this time. I mean, that's like the... It was a huge tree tree. See, I had input. So that needs to be the centerpiece so everything needs yeah. to flow into it and flow out of it to the other area. Yeah, that's, yeah. I think that's a good way to think and about it. And it's way far away so we can accomplish the, the we can we can keep the tenant can be private. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah exactly. Mm -hmm. And that's and, a uh, point. And, and right. though and we can have that yeah. beautiful tree. Yeah. Somewhere so and 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 I don't know if it was done, so I can't speak to it, but that there um, that's something we'd want to work in the budget so that we'd want to work into the budget so that we do have, uh, you know, uh, a certified arborist to somebody who, somebody maybe not just it, maybe not just any old arborist, but somebody who, who works with these, like, you know, whomever that is that did, uh, who, that did the, uh, the H.H. Richardson Park in New York and the other, the other mm -hmm. things, you know, so, so get somebody with some real knowledge to look at that so that it doesn't become the clock farm. Like right. let's let's be proactive on it now. Wait, it's right. it's 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 beautiful and healthy and vibrant right now. But let's keep it that way because yeah. there is some trimming involved there and mm -hmm. that it needs. But we definitely need an expert opinion. Mm -hmm. And and again, while it's healthy and vibrant, that opinion is going to cost us a lot less 
than yeah. when, when we start noticing a lot of dead limbs or disease yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. and whatnot. And especially, again, like we were saying to last hearing with Winterberry, and then as I noted out in the field there today with the, with the tenant, Mike Luke, there is a lot of um, standing red oak and white oak that is, that is dying and, and, and getting lich and covered. Uh -huh. and, you know, for whatever reason, it's waterlogging. So again, it's just you know something to if we're gonna yeah. feature the whole plan around this mm -hmm. thing. Let's yeah. let's take care of it the right yeah, way. Yeah, definitely. I also yeah. want us to think about planting the next one. Yeah. 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 Sure. What are we leaving for people two hundred years from now? Yeah. 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 Oh yeah. I love well, that. That goes to that sycamore in the back. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, very good question. Good. Do you guys think you have enough meat on the, the bone from us for this one for we now? Do. And, Thank and you. we'll we'll shoot for that May May second yeah, and see what date second, works good. Second to the seventh. Yeah, yeah, we can be in touch yeah, with you. Can we do second or eight? Second or eight. <laughs> Skip seven. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Um, you can't do the ninth. And maybe I'll write uh, this possible. on here. Oh, oh, okay. Second or eighth? Does it to uh, for a com May for a community meeting? Oh right, yeah. That's a good point. I'm just writing on this form here. We have a email address for our team. Does oh, okay. it's just sure, nineteen? Right. Is it instead of twenty nineteen? I don't think it is. I'm I think good that's either. just our email. Either yeah. day. Either day. Either day. Yeah. 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 Okay. Um, great. Okay. Great. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. Thanks for your time. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, six thirty time frame. Okay with you guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is that okay with the general public? Is that okay with you guys? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, you, you might you might make it seven. Yeah. Okay. These guys are coming from North Hampton. That's okay. Drive. That's okay. Uh, That's all right. I'd rather make it so more people, people will come. come. Yeah. 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 Okay. That's a good point. Yeah. Young kids and all that. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. You have a better chance of getting people there at seven. Yeah. 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 There's oh, that sort of like right. before or after dinner thing. Yeah. Um, and we will be back. Um, at least a couple more times to, to do visit. some yeah, deeper yeah. analysis. Okay. So we'll okay. be in touch. Up when Sounds we're awesome. Done. All right, yeah. have a safe drive back. Thank Thank you. Thanks. Thanks very much. Thank you. Have a good night. Thank you. Yeah. All right, so, so bring back Foundry? Yeah. 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 Is that okay? Okay. Just a discussion, no no yeah. votes. Yeah. All right, now 150 Foundry. Circling back. <laughs> Okay, so we I only hope back we to continue, or is it effectively continued? Yeah, I, 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 Reopen. I can make a but uh, I'll do it all the way to the You might be here now, but you just need to eliminate it. It's like, that's probably going to be okay. Right, right. But we'll leave it for you time. Hi. Oh, is it Can there? I help you? 53 Peter Smallwood, have you heard that already? Yes, sorry. Okay, I guess um, I, okay. Are you? I'm, I'm just in a butter. Okay, and are you, do you have any comments? We closed it. Oh, no, we didn't. No, we didn't. They didn't have a file number. Oh, yeah, we're not continuing. Oh, so it's continued. It's yeah. continued. It is continued to next, to next. Sixth. Uh, Sixth. To the May. Like the 6th of May. Yeah. yeah. get public comment on okay. the record now in case you can't. No, because it's not. Yeah, it's closed, right? Cl we closed it for the night. Right. Okay, but we so did. 6th of May. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks. Can I ask your name just because uh, I'm Richard Kelly. Richard Kelly. Thank you. That's for uh, Alfred Rowe. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. For Alfred. All right. Uh, yeah. All right. First, first, thank you for your patience. Oh, sure. Yeah. Thank you, guys. And I, I think we, we basically left off where the, at least the three of us are open to uh, looking at some kind of a solution that uh, involves some chemical applications. As long as they're properly conditioned and safeguarded and, um, you know, can't be. I mean, certainly I so, some of the, the initial questions that come up are, um, especially the camp full of campers, um, is, you know, uh, timing of the applications, uh, you know, closing the outflow, when's that going to go? I mean, the, most of the outflows, we're talking two to three days. What impact does that have on your use of it, if you considered that? Um, the serial application, I don't know if these things get done at the same time with two different herbicides, or one's done one week, and then the next one's done a few weeks later. Now, we're probably, these are all just considerations because we're not even to the point of making that decision yet. Right. I'm just telling you, as I'm reading through the plans, mm -hmm. these are the, you should ask for. Yeah. Th this yeah. is what I'm, I'm thinking about as I'm doing this. Mm -hmm. um, 
And um, I think that from my personal um, approach to this is that um, I probably want to know um, a little bit more about the, the, the um, materials being used. Um, just I'll probably have to do some of my own research anyway just to, to ensure that any, any sort of impact I'm aware of. Um, I know that they're deemed safe for, you know, the uses and, and that, um, you know, the, all the things. You guys have done a good job of summarizing that for me. So when I read it, I say, okay, my baseline is, you know, we're not going to grow an 11th toe here. So, you know, so th that's um, w what I'm looking at here from the sense of, okay, let's do that. Um, I'd want to make sure that there aren't other things out there um, that say something a little bit different than that, but, but from my own standpoint. So I'm just giving you my perspective as I, as I think about this. Yes, and I was just going to say um, there is the uh, Massachusetts stuff, but this is just for example what the uh, Wisconsin DNR has out. They have fact sheets in this. Great. So really, oh, awesome. they really, a lot of states that have registered pesticide will have some information on it. Great. I like these there because they're fairly short and sweet. Yeah, I like yeah. those too. Yeah. <laughs> 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 we got a bad end of fall. The last end one is Amazamon. Right. It's the Wisconsin Department of Natural Resources. Yeah. Are okay. you are you offering those? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the They're fine. Okay. Now, does your website like, you want me to get you have copies? No. Some of the other. Actually, I probably so have an uh, email I can send you, and you can send it to all the members. Great. Awesome. When you introduced yourself earlier, you mentioned some of the projects. So, does like your website have other projects that you com yes. your company is represented yes. and worked on yes and, and again like i said our company is now a national company <clears throat> so there are projects down in virginia and florida and, sure. um but we can um just kind of off the top of my head some kind of municipalities that we uh, hire us to manage the water bodies in town um norton's one um, uh, my brother's on me over there that sounds great yeah. um uh, additionally, we work on we manage, about, uh, uh, yeah. probably 20 the, uh, water bodies in state parks uh, for uh, the uh, Mass Kemp Park Safety Sheets, MSDS, yeah. well, we uh, Lakes and Ponds Program um, annually, kind of as yeah. as Rory spoke to legwork. That that to me is 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 legwork. Is hey, what are these what are these other people? What was the, what was their experience? You know, right. versus in the same as so what you know document. Just with, your, with your basic conceptual approval, um, uh, there's some real basic um, pieces of information that Dr. Mitchell started to speak to. Um, that um, we know natural heritage. We know we need to hear from them. Mm -hmm. um, their first initial response was, you know, uh, think again. And they did think again, and we have a different proposal. Mm -hmm. So, um, so we do absolutely need to hear what they have to right. say because we have had no, we we will have no wildlife habitat evaluation mm -hmm. um, with this, with these, per, with the, with the peer reviewer and and the project proponent. Yeah. So we need, we whether or not you want to do more wildlife evaluation, I think we should put that on the table as a possibility. Yeah. More importantly. Um, I I don't I don't think you can stress enough that um, the bathymetrics of the basin. You if Sorry, you don't the depth the, the depth of the pond, okay. how much water is being held in the pond. I mean you know it's four point two acres. We have no um, we don't have in the record we don't we never got an as built for the dredging. It was gonna go down to it was gonna be a nine foot hole. Uh, maybe there was gonna be a fifteen foot hole. Depends on what you read. We don't know. Um, it's you know four four and a half four point two feet is well. There was an air, there's some depth there. You know there's a hole there. You know yeah. there's a hole there. But do you know that there are a few holes? Because what you, you're talking about you're talking about herbicides that are going to just sit. Mm -hmm. So you need to know what your volume is if you're going to get the dosage right. Right. Um, I, and it works two ways too. It also helps design the aeration mm -hmm. issue too, because you need to know how much of a, right. how much dissolved oxygen you need to go in the system of volume. Yeah, because four of the, if 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 it's four feet. I think it's more than four feet, but yeah, based on what we're boating out there. So it, I mean, that that the sun gets should get pretty close to the bottom most of the time. So, um, and then the other question is, what's the bottom material? We know it it sits on a sandy, we know it sits in a sandy basin. Um, but we also know that it 
may not have been dredged. The data we have mm -hmm. is 1995 data. Mm -hmm. So how much silt is in there? Does it matter mm -hmm. how much silt is in there? Because that's where the herbicide is going to get stored. It's a useful way to what information to get. And I don't know whether you've done things where you've gotten, I'll put this to, to map, where you've gotten the depth of the soft sediment. And I've done it very simply, getting electrical conduit pipe. Oh, and yeah. pushing it down to yeah. the, the throw, throw throw right down. Down. If you've yeah. got sand and gravel, you know when you hit that. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that will give you some idea of the, the depth of that. You don't need, and that can be done the same time you're doing the bathymetry. Mm -hmm. it, you don't need massive, you would not need massive numbers of points. And what I'm thinking about in terms of water relations too is that the other thing I think that you probably want to talk to the, con the commission when you come back, get your flashboards out, put them in, make yeah. sure they're tight, yeah. And this is a good time to measure how much flow is going into that from groundwater and to see how high it goes up. Maybe make some measurements how quickly the water goes up and when you take them down, how fast it goes down. Yeah. I mean, and that, this is a good time to do it. This is the time of groundwater flow. Because mm -hmm. I'll give you some idea <laughs> of the, the flow the, right now. <laughs> the hydraulics mm -hmm. of it, you know, and where, where the sources of your water is coming from. Yeah. So if the boards, if the boards leak, we can, uh, Dr. Mitchell talked about putting sandbags on the other right. side yeah. of them. Um, or maybe some other way, depending on what the leakage is. Um, or if they need to be replaced, then there's time to do that. But they're pretty instrumental, so I get them out earlier rather than later. Yeah, it's easier okay. to do. Yeah. All right. Um, yeah, I think some of the key points you talked about for me was like, what, what are the triggers for you know, using the, the tools? Um, <clears throat> The actual analysis of the water quality for it sounded like properly, you know, dosing the um, the algaecide. Uh, some basic DO, uh, some basic water uh, chemistry. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, what's the dissolved oxygen level now? Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. Um, what it, there's some basic, there's some other basic chemistry. Yeah, I, I okay. guess as part of the filing, it probably would be good to whatever chemicals are proposed to have those fact sheets and the MSDS sheets. Um, yeah, the MSDS, we have them all, I can yeah. get those. Yeah, that it's all just part of our package. That's why they go. And then respond to the comments. Yeah. Um, uh, there's a lot of very specific things. and uh, Just from my own uh, per this is professional um, observation is, is Dr. Mitchell has an approach to be pretty realistic. And I haven't seen him ask for super expensive stuff. It's, you know, there's ways to do it. I think you understand it's a small pond and and it's a large part of of um, the functioning of the day camp. But you you but the solutions I'm hearing from him seem really reasonable okay. and realistic. Good, but we want to have enough because you're going to be setting a precedent. To, as far as I understand, this is only a first action you have for land under water in Easton. Mm -hmm. So you just may want to make sure that you're satisfied. You also have an ACEC. So I mean, you, right. you know, think about you, the press. I mean, I, you know, I think you should fully consider whether this can be, and I think it is permeable, frankly. Mm -hmm. um, but just you'll need to make sure that there's enough safeguards in there that you can also um, feel good about allowing this to go through and not think, well, how is someone else going to be using it? Yeah, oh, absolutely. Absolutely. I'm in the commission, so I always think about, you know, oh, absolutely. No, and that's precedents and all that. Because some will think, well, you did this, and that, well, there was reasons why we did that. Right, right. Yeah, make sure we, we properly define that. Um, very good. Anything else you want to add? No, yeah. I was just going to echo what Andrea said. I can appreciate Dr. Mitchell's approach because too often I'll, I'll be the first one. I, I don't like peer review. I don't like experts. I add this, add that, and it's kind of like if I was an applicant and throwing all this stuff. But this is all mostly from what I can. As she stated, you know, low budget, low tech. These are these are things that are going to give us make for a better project. But they're all easily um, attainable, and then they're, they're they're fair. Mm -hmm. You know, they're certainly fair to the applicant given the situation. Yeah. And then the flip side, I'm sure the applicant's done his research because his livelihood is these children who are being exposed or potentially exposed to these things. So, you know, well, I don't think they're going to be doing, uh, I assume, no, they <laughs> should be swimming lessons the day after. Yeah, they'll, 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 <laughs> they'll, they'll be out of the water, <laughs> water so during the yes. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 that doesn't need to be said. <laughs> right. And just, just for the, for the just front, shot for the pond, jump in, kids. <laughs> for, for, 
for the record, we, we, we do put up, I, I describe them as obnoxious orange uh, posters when we treat. Um, you have to actively go out of your way to not see them. I know you've seen them around the water bodies in Sturbridge. Um, and we list the uh, contact restrictions. Again, kind of speaking to your point before the recess, um, they're, they're, all these product, products don't have uh, a contact use restriction right. on the EPA label. We as a company impose a one day restriction as just business, prudent business practice if we can keep people out. Um, again, they're not, the, the kids aren't swimming in there as is so um that's kind of a also additional safeguard um but again should little johnny go fall in should the dog go swimming or the dog runs down and start lapping it up the in, there are negligible impacts according to um the the, the uh the herbicide label right um, and, which, and you're adding a little extra buffer with that right, for the one day just yeah. to if we can keep people out let's keep people out okay. um, anything else you want to add for now Ryan? no all right, I think I'm, um, I'm good. Do you guys have any other questions Couple for comments? us? Yeah, yeah. Um, I have some regarding Andrews, mm -hmm. um, just for the record. So the thing about MEPA was because you put it in the notice of intent that you provided proof? Yes, so the, that, the environmental monitor, I emailed you. Oh, this afternoon? Yes, after you sent it to us. Oh, okay. So that got, that's, I mean, that's in, I think it's the January 23rd okay. environmental monitor. Um, nice. There's a link, the link I sent. Um, kind of to hit on you. Yes. I think off the top of my head. Um, like, uh, this was emailed to the revised um Management scope was emailed to Natural Heritage, Natural Heritage um, okay. the same day that I sent the copy, and I Keith confirmed it. Um, so yeah, we're still waiting for Natural Heritage. Um, the abutment okay. notification was provided. You did provide the abutment notification. Yeah, that was the oh, certificate of mailing that I gave you. Uh, yeah, everybody gave me something tonight. <laughs> so yes, you have it. thank just you. More on the record. <laughs> <laughs> um, and yeah, your statement number six the states the you get into among other things that the standards of 310 CMR 10.53, 1, 2, 7, and 8 are met. Um, one is not applicable as the proposed project is limited to the landowner water bodies and waterways. Um, there is a So you can respond in writing? Yeah, I can. Okay. I'm going to copy this and send it right there. But yes, Great. that's um, the waiver again was going to want to wait for the uh, natural heritage comments. Great. And um, I think that was all I had. Okay. okay. Very good. Um, well, my comments were easy to respond to. Had it, had it from another <laughs> project. <so. laughs> um, any public comments on 150 Foundry Street? Chow E, 63 Depot Street. Thanks, sir. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, I, I talked to Dr. Mitchell outside, and uh, a water quality test. I think we should do water quality test. I know they're putting in a new septic system. I'm just wondering if the old leach through there, I mean, you got pure sand there, and the septic will leach into that pond, and also you got a cranberry bog across the street with phosphorus and all kinds of chemicals added to those things, which will easily leach through the sand and get into this pond to cause nutrients and, uh, and it's part of the problem is what... I guess to, to that point, if you did a water quality test, would it pick up on potential uh, uh, fertilizers that would use and would be able to match it up with what they used over that distance? You, would, you would not be able, you, you pick up, you basically would usually test for nitrogen fractions, which is nitrate, nitrite, ammonia. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, once it's in the groundwater, you can't tell if it came from a bog or from a... Right. Oh, else. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> once it's in, once it, it's formed, that's it. Yeah. So, but it'd be interesting to get, get some baseline information for it. So, thank you. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any other co public comment on 150 Foundry Street? 
Uh, seeing none, would you guys like to continue to a future meeting? Uh, May 6th, preferably. Will and you be ready for May 6th? Yeah, I, I mean, I'm waiting to hear back from Natural Heritage. Um, I mean, and it's almost probably been about a month. The um, 11th. Yeah. How about... Um, maybe maybe let's, let's tentatively schedule for that, but if we don't hear back from Natural Heritage by the 30th. How yeah. about the bathymetric work? Um, that can be done quick. That's, I mean, okay. we can, okay, like, we can be out and collect that. That's easy. Okay. There's no ice anymore. I was just the same time to do the, this offset of it yeah. at the same yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, all right. Uh, motion to continue one fifty. And the flashboards easily. And the flashboard, yeah. I think, is something. You know, and what you want to do for that is to have some way of putting in, and the easiest way is to put in some sort of, it doesn't have to be surveyed but some sort of a yardstick near your outlet so yeah. you can see it. And then you can just take photographs with okay. the days, you know, days and times. You can see how quickly, again, it responds, how far it gets up. I don't know if it's going to be, even, you know. I don't know. I don't know. This is what we don't know. Sure. Yep. Yep. Mm -hmm. And any, any other questions you have regarding my comments, if this you know occurs to Matt, just relay them to Andrew and she or they to me. Right. Okay. But we're expecting written response to comments. No, but this is additional ones beyond the ones. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right. Motion to continue 150 Foundry Street to our May 6th meeting, contingent upon uh, hearing back from Natural Heritage by April 30th. Uh, if we hear back from Natural Heritage after that, we'll reschedule. Very good. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thanks, thank guys. You. Thanks for hanging around. Absolutely. No, thank you for your time. Um, so the, the next meeting we have is uh, May 6th and then, and then May 20th, 20th, but we're going to have to reschedule that one because of town meeting. Because I'm, I'm away to May 7th through the 5th. Do okay. we want to do that right now? I'm on May 7th through the 5th. jump on the Hawaii? No, we it's, it's on the agenda. Yeah, it was, do we want to do it before he leaves? Uh, I, let's see. Oh, so they're saying you might need some more time. Um, oh, um, it depends how quickly he's going to, yeah, it's that, um, hmm. You think you'd get back by the 7th? The, the 6th? Get the natural response heritage. back? Or? Oh, yeah, the response back. He said back natural heritage by, yeah. by April 30th. Yeah, well, what no. dates are you going again? Same time, the 7th. I'm going on vacation, the 7th to 15th. 7th to 15th. It might be okay. tight for me to get responding to you, depending on how much material you've got. I'll put it together sooner as opposed to. You can do a quicker lot of that. I'll let you know if I think there's going to be an issue. Okay. okay. I've been known to take work you know, and then they can't. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, I don't yeah. want you doing that. I don't want you doing that. My wife doesn't want me doing that either. <laughs> <laughs> last, last question is if. Um, the commissioner who's not here, is he now in... Two other commissioners. Or two other commissioners, sorry. Um, are they able to vote on this, or is, do we... They can to... miss one meet. Well, you go ahead. Yeah. Well, yeah, I was going to say, well, you're going to... I, I could... I don't know as good as the details as you, but uh, they can miss one meeting. They can uh, review the footage and sign one of the oh, Roberts. Mullins. Mullins. Thank you. Okay. And read the... Just wanted to check yeah, if we needed to get you three back here or... Okay. No, they're not out of the, they're not out of the picture yet. Yeah. Because this was yeah. this is the first. Yeah. 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 Okay. No, I just wanted to double check. Yeah. No. 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 Okay. Thank you. Call. Very good. Thanks, guys. Take care. Good night. Thank Thanks Thank a lot. Anything else you need at this point? Uh, not that I know. Very good. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Yes. Thank you. Without tonight's delays, the bill was fifteen hundred. That's it. Yeah, yeah, Global Park is here. Yeah, so fifteen hundred dollars. Bob on his like expertise is oh, um, nice like style too. Yeah. Like it. Yeah. Um, to to Michael's point about rescheduling that meeting on the twentieth, should we talk about that right now while it's not that? Um, we yeah. have. Uh, do, yeah. do we know what we could reschedule it to yet, or? Oh yeah. Oops, that's not it. Available dates in May. Because that's so that's four weeks first, from Tuesday today. today. Second. Of course, we don't know. Um, Five. So the twenty first, twenty second, twenty third, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, wide open in terms of conference rooms. Okay. The Tuesday after Memorial Day. Oh well. Oh, oh geez. So now we're pushing up against potential like public comment meeting for the Conway thing too. Then make them the same Maybe night. Maybe just make them the same night. Yeah. And try to keep the uh, the hearing load light. But I guess we don't really have much control over that.
So, so I, I have. Um, Conway School that, was the sixth, seventh. Um, the twenty. That's that's the first. Let's see where where was the twenty fourth one was was out there, in. Um, May twenty fourth is when they oh they were looking for North the design Hampton. the design charrette. Yes, yeah, in Northampton. Oh, that's in Northampton. Yeah. Really? Yeah. You want to go out there for the Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, let's go. Good. <laughs> I mean, Excellent. Um, I, I have um, I have things on the the twenty second, maybe the twenty third. So I mean, if we're going to reschedule this, the twenty first is better for me okay. than any of these other ones. And then the twenty eighth, if we went to Memorial Day, the I, day after Memorial Day. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Then you'd be one week to June third, which is the next week. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, twenty first. Twenty first is good for me. It's good for me. Twenty first for everybody. At this point, we're the most reliable three right now, anyway. Yeah. So yeah. Make, okay. make a motion to reschedule the uh, May twentieth meeting to May twenty first at six thirty. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I got the second something. All right. Cool. Um, all right. <clears throat> Hi. Who do we have here? We have Zoo. The Zoo I saw. Are there. you and you are I with? Are you two? Are you unit two fifteen? Two fifteen. No. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 Oh, one. Um, it's up to the chairman. We both. We just. He's just checking to see what public is here. Sorry, the first one is always. Uh, it was always at the. Zoo prospect owners are not here tonight. A zoo is okay if we skip ahead on a couple of enforcement things. Oh, great. Okay. Um, all right. So should we just go right to that then? Because you guys are here. Uh, where are we? So um, both of you represent uh, are from Eastern Mobile Park. Right. Okay. I'm not a president of the Eastern Mobile Homeowners Association. Oh, you're okay. Charity. I'm Charity. And I'm the vice president. And he's Scott. And you're Scott. Yeah. That's oh, right. nice to meet you in person. Yeah. That's right. It's <laughs> nice. I know we've talked a lot through uh, All right. So I guess we'll, we'll call you guys up. Uh, we'll do the Eastern Mobile Home Park Enforcement action. Sure. sure. So, um... You guys want to come up and if you don't mind just signing in. So I received, um, a anonymous call from a um, sorry, from somebody in the local park that a retaining wall was being built um, at unit 214 uh, 215 which is um, if you're if you know the mobile home park arrangement it's on the inland side of the, it's on the out, outer perimeter road across the street from the wastewater treatment plant, you know, the mound. And there's a little bit of a parking area across from the mound. It's right in that area, but it's on the inside. So that, so he has wetland in the backyard. This is the, this is the retaining wall, um, the day that I saw it. Um, and that might've been Thursday or Wednesday. And, um, it's right in the wet, it's right at the edge of the wetland. There it is, I'm in the wetland, looking over at it. And here it is, when you're nice, right up attention next to it, there's the wetland. Here's another picture from the other side, there's the wetland. Are those trees marked for a cut down? I think they were marked, no, to be, to, they actually moved around them, so I think okay. they were marked to be saved. But right, here you, you is, see a box on the other tree. yeah, they boxed, the, no, it's not boxed, it's outer. Or around. It's around, yeah, yeah, it's around the outer side. So I think they were meant to be saved. So we are as close to the wetland as any project I've seen in the two years I've worked with you. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I knew that the chairman was out of town. So I like to call, when I want to take an immediate enforcement action, I like to call a commission member and say, I'm not going to wait unless you tell me differently. So I called, um, I called Michael Goodman to take a look at it. Um, and you came to the same conclusion I did. We needed an immediate cease and desist. Um, so also take a look on this picture. You see how there's this little, um, you see this wood mm -hmm. frame? Um, I think that is framing out, because I'm so darn smart. I think it might be framing out for a patio. So I don't think this is just a, um, I don't think this is just, uh, I think he's trying to reuse his backyard make his backyard more, re more usable. Um, 
And um, I think you might be wanting to put a patio in. You put a patio in that close to a wetland, you're going to want a screened in porch. Um, there's his backyard that he created from nothing. And that's, that's how you can see it from the road. Mm -hmm. um, it is visible from the property manager's office. office. <laughs> Why the property manager, who knows darn well what the Wetland Protection Act says, yeah. didn't call is kind of like, I did, not, I, don't, I did not send the letter of cease and desist. I sent a letter of cease and desist out on Thursday by certified mail to the owner in New York, and I sent an email to the property manager who's on site and to the, the uh, president of the homeowners association because if we're going to take action in the village, then she needs to know because she might get hurt, might hear about it. I said cease and desist, and I've got an enforcement order drafted um, for you to consider. Um, how you want to handle this is your decision. Uh, do you take it out, or do you, or do you um, just which is one option, or do you um, re you have to regrade because he's because he's holding back dirt. Um, you got you got a grade grading issue here yeah, now. So it was probably I mean, was was that dirt trucked in or? Yeah, I mean it's it's definitely could not have. It could it, this this gravel could not be in this location without a vertical ball right. holding it in place. So yeah, he brought in gravel. Okay. Hmm. Oh, so what do we do? Um, I asked building ins the building inspector to take a look at it. I don't think it's going to be tall enough to require a building permit, but doesn't mean wetlands doesn't get a get a shot at it. So, I mean, there's definitely fill that's even sitting there. Oh, there you go. Waiting. Did you get out to see this yeah. property? I mean, my, my first inclination is to get rid of it. Yes, I was out of this property. Well, because I didn't actually say what the, where, this, where the enforcement I, was. I, I found I 215. I, I think I saw every other unit in the place, too, but I found 215. <laughs> yeah, I didn't. You're there. I only observed from the road and, and, and saw it. Enforcement? No. But I guess. Um, right there. Are they in here? No, no. Um, what do you, what do you, well, I'd like to ask these, well, one, well, it's their parks, I'd like to ask what they think, and number two, I know the vice president here has spent a lifetime pounding nails and doing construction yeah. projects, so yeah. what do you think of that, the fill, my the worry, park, do you think it got brought in, or? Oh, I would have yeah. to say so, but uh, and my thing is it's made out of wood, it's going to rot at some yeah. point. I mean, you whether, know the it, whether, whether it's uh, treated or not, it's going to rot yeah. at some point. It's not like a stone wall, it's going to be there forever, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm not even quite sure can hold all that back for very long. Yeah, I don't know how he's got a brace. You know, the homeowner did this. You know, the, in a park that owns the property. You know, who's responsible? Well, that's the thing is that I have been um, I have been told by the property manager and their attorney, one of their attorneys, that um, activity outside of the trailer is the responsibility of the property owner. Mm. So we sent, I sent the letter of inquiry and I would recommend the enforcement order be issued to the owner. That it's his responsibility, the, the, the landowner, owner. the landowner, which, it, which is the, which is Morgan management. Mm. Which is Grand Atlas now. Yeah, so right. it's, it just keeps Wow. Um, Do they still have a Pittsford? Yes. Yeah, the same, same See, building. see everybody in this, then, and town council and the select people, because as you said, who, who really owns it? Who, well, we under the assessor's office, that's who you go to. Yeah. Yeah. And we went to the assessor's office. I wasn't going to speak to town council yeah. and, and uh, board of selectmen until we, until we got blown off. Right. Um, and we haven't been blown off. Yeah. Although the prop, I can't say that they're you know, well, the knocking on the door either. And the fact that the uh, manager of the uh, park <laughs> watched him build it. this, you right. know, yeah. they're, quite they're, literally, you know, I given know, all the stuff. We know we know why it happened. They're friends. I mean, yeah. So, mm -hmm. But um, we, I want to know, was there anything it, we can do? Probably not really, except just that we know about it, right? Yeah, um, I mean, we're, there's going to have to be a hearing. There's going to have to be an application filed, 
and there's going to have to be a review. And the question, the, the question to the commission is, what do you want the application to say? Is it an after the fact con, um, evaluation of this? Now that it's there, let's deal with it. No, or is no. it going to? Or is it a? Is it just because it's there doesn't mean it's allowed? Um, I, I, I want the fill removed. I want yeah. the structure removed. Agreed. I want the. I want some sort of restoration on that bank. Um, that's that's what I'm looking at. I, I want that yep. bank restabilized. Well, I mean, we see some trees cut down. Were those permanent or? I mean, I think the things in the in the wetlands. Oh, you're looking at this piece right yeah. here. No, there's been tree. There's been there's been vegetation clearing. Yeah. So what I identified it as construction of a wooden retaining like wall tree in the within down. ten feet oh, of the BVW oh, without right authorization. Yeah. Well, I guess it could have fallen. Did yeah, the, the roots. Uh, attorney for the park, Kraus? Respond or did I? Um, did the CC go to? I went to Kelleher, I think. Yeah. Kelleher is the one I spoke with earlier. Yeah, and he was wow. he was really responsive. He was really responsive. Yeah, okay. Um, so what did we send it to? We yeah, said, I, I think uh, I think Rory outlined it pretty well, but I'd like to see none. Uh, yeah, I, I mean, <laughs> so we it's, sent it's, it's just not something we're going to permit. No. no. You know, I can't imagine us ever permitting something like that. Okay. I feel bad for the kid that did it because he did it thinking that it was okay because the manager watched him do it. You know, yeah. and it wasn't like you can't Put do that. Put time and effort you know? into it. Right. I did not send it to an attorney. I sent it to um, Rob uh, Harold. I sent it to Jason Rodriguez, the property manager. Uh, oh, Robert Harold. Harold, the owner, He's Morgan Management, who we knew of, and yeah. and you. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so um, so remove, restore the bank, and submit an application in the 30 days. I'll do everything within 30 days. Oh, that's going to have to have a silt fence put in and everything right. else you would think, right? Yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, silt fence goes without that, or that thing. saying, yeah. It goes without saying, but they won't do it unless you say it. Right, yeah. right, right. Yeah. So, <laughs> in, well, I, was, I, meant, I meant that I'm going to put it in. Oh, okay. Whether, it's part, say, it's part of the not. boilerplate that you have. Yeah, yeah. yes. Install silt fence, remove wall, but to, but to your point, I, I know it is in the boilerplate, but let's make sure it's in the, like the highlight blurb. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, install install silt fence, remove wall, restore bank with native vegetation. Yeah. Um, and establish a, a lawn lawn no no farther than pre prior to construction. Yeah. Um, when do you timing wise? Um, install the silt fence, remove the wall, restore the bank shape before a notice of intent is submitted. Notice of intent requires an engineer, unless you do it as an RDA, which the determination of an RDA is if you do it as proposed, there's no impact on the wetland. Mm. And I'm going to say oh, that's, that's been so for like two years. When the wall? The wall yeah. Are you really? kidding? Oh, gone. At least gone. Well, years. see, the gone. the kick is that if you don't look right to if you don't look to the right, you yeah. don't notice it. Well, it was mostly the, the the additional soil we saw delivered, and then we looked that way, kind of. Okay. Mm -hmm. Noticed. Um. Well, now we know. As far as like it. time constraints to get these things done. Yeah. I I think it's I think now we know, and it should be it should be. I think he can get it done in 30 days. I think the notice of an, and he should be in this. He should. He had the. He was asked to be here tonight. Right. Not the not unit owner because I don't know who the unit owner is, but the property manager didn't call. Didn't call. Right. Yeah. All right. So yeah, 30 days, and he should be at our next meeting, the sixth. Okay. I think to Scott's point, you know, it, 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 it's, if it's an unwilling person, you know. To make it an RDA, to you know, I don't want to see the guy get stuck to pay an engineer. Just right. to, let's just return it to what it was. I have no problem with that. And his bill, Bill, who is not here tonight, if so, but on the one issue, you know, we've always said, you know, Mother Nature will revegetate itself. You know, we don't need a, a wetland scientist to come out here and, and a bunch of plantings, but it does need to be returned to, you know, what was. Mother Nature what was won't it. take care of this one. When we said Mother Nature will do it, we were at an elevation 
where the wetland was and the groundwater is. Now we're going on a slope. The only way to hold the slope in place is with jute netting and, and soil. Yeah, no, 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 no not, not that part. I just meant the plantings. Yeah, the okay. Uh, you know, the person that pays the bill is Morgan Management or yeah. whoever they're, what they're currently called. Yeah. It's not, it's not unit owner. Yeah. I don't, mm -hmm. I don't even need to know who the unit owner is. Mm -hmm. He's not, he's not at risk. Yeah. I mean, these guys, somebody in this, in this association was told to remove a fence from their front yard because you weren't supposed to put fences on, on association, on, on the, on Morgan Management's property. Yeah. Right. But you can put in a retaining wall. Right. You know. Yeah. Yeah. It depends on whose friend you are, you know? Yeah. Well, that's not our business. Okay. So, okay. so I, I mean, I think it's notice of intent, my, unless you guys disagree. I, I think you, no, I'm not yeah, sure if you're disagreeing or not. Um, from the sounds of it, I don't think the RDA is applicable. I don't think so. Yeah. I think it sends a really bad message. Yeah. Um, to, get an R, to get a notice of intent in is probably 60 days. Okay. That sounds fine. Okay. Yeah. Enforcement action. All right. Okay. Do you guys have any questions? No. So well, you're continuing to. We're issuing. Six. No, we're issuing tonight an enforcement order. Yeah. Okay. And we're requiring that, uh, like I see, the proper manager or representative from Morgan come to our next meeting. Uh, you know, should have been here tonight. On mm -hmm. May 6th. But, uh, they come to our next meeting on May 6th. But we don't. It's nothing further that you're going to discuss, so we don't need to come back. Um. Well. Actually, I, I mean, can't we'll, come we'll back. Have, I'm be in Oklahoma. <laughs> oh, no, nice. we'll, we'll probably have a discussion around the uh, the enforcement order and then I guess progress and, and timeline and that kind of stuff. I should have heard from him by then. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, all right. Okay. Thank you guys for coming. Thanks, Thanks for your patience. All righty. Okay. Thank have you. Have a good night. Yeah, good seeing you. Good seeing you. Okay. Take care. Thank you. Okay. So thanks a lot for taking the call because this is this was kind of a bad boy. Um, I don't think it's anything like um, 60 Eastman, just for the record. Um, we're, we, I jumped on it within a week, and we're issuing right away. And um, we've had about eight um, enforcement actions sure. in the time I've been here, and only only one is um, yeah. is lagged. Uh, all right. Well, let's. Um, Azu's here. Motion on this. Oh, to, to read it? Oh, yeah, oh, sorry. Uh, motion to issue uh, enforcement order for the Eastern uh, Mobile Home Park for the um, retaining wall and fill. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Do you want, does anybody want to come in and see what how it gets issued, or we're just going to go with what I basically heard tonight with a little... That sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. Um, Azu, 33 yes, Prospect Street. <laughs> Get off Reddit. <laughs> oh, that hurts. How you doing, man? The aging process is not looking too kind on me, I'm telling you. <laughs> you, are, you are always... <laughs> oh, I'm serious. You know, the, I mean, I used to be able to move around easily. Man, I go to bed aching, I get up aching. You know? <laughs> My wife told me the other day she's going to treat me in. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I ain't work too much anymore. Save me my misery. Yeah. <laughs> oh, excuse me. All right. So, where did you find that? that oh. Oh, so, oh, oh. Can you go back to that, please? Oh, okay. Can you, yep. Can you, um, yeah, it's that little adventure. Yeah. 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 It looks different in the picture. Yeah. What you got going on here? Did that. Okay. All right. Um, want to bring us up to speed? Yes, sir. So um, last time uh, that I came, there was a question as to uh, the uh, the pool, and actually the pool did exist before, mm -hmm. and uh, with a concrete apron. So what I did was uh, uh, I updated the plan to identify that on the existing condition, mm -hmm. and then uh, on my sheet number two, I uh, updated 
uh, I updated that and I included a photo um, that I took of the patio of uh, so you can see of, uh, that's what once they got an enforcement photo that's where it was. So the wall is uh, composed of two uh, uh, the the corners if you will that are like 36 inches and then the um, and the, the smaller row that is 18 inches. So it's almost like a, we got a wall and then we got a columns at the end of it, mm -hmm. decorative. So the only, in terms of uh, work, it's really the that wall and then that little bump out in the front there. And uh, I did a, a calculation that I submitted with the, uh, some narrative. So I'm hoping that the commission where there's going to be an actual limited area that he can now work. And I'm obviously I talked to him and I said that it's a good fit there for he needs to put the bar the uh, limit so that it, it can be inspected and seen physically. Because the work that he's doing now doesn't really, he can't bring any, he's not proposing to bring any more fill other than the replication work. Do we know, uh, aside from that area that juts out, were you able to confirm that the, the patio area identified here is what was originally around the pool? That's correct. Okay. That's correct. With that fence, but the fence is gone. How were you mm. able to confirm that? Pardon me? How were you able to confirm that? I looked at the records. I looked at the records and I did the, well, I looked at where they did the excavation work. Okay. Yeah. So they did the excavation work to take that out. And you can actually, over here, you can see the remains of the fence. On the on this side here. So I uh, I did the little calculation. It's really not that much different, other than the fact that if you look at the uh, on the uh, uh, three-page calculation that I did, the uh, pavers of uh, generate of uh, pretty much the same runoff as the concrete, and the reason is the same is because they added that little bump out. If, they, if you take out the bump out, then the amount of runoff that you get from the pe uh, concrete will be more than the uh, runoff you get from the pavers. But because of that, uh, a bump out, it, it, it's a wash. And so I, I included over here a little, because really, quite frankly, you step out of the house, you know, you need a little area to stand on. So I included. Yeah, plenty <laughs> of area there. I included. Uh, I'm, I'm going to go ahead and say I, I want that yeah. jut out removed. Which um, this one here? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it's it's well within the 50, 50 foot no touch. Yeah. Uh, it's very close to the wetland itself, um, and it, yeah, I, I think it needs to. Uh, I, 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 my position is I, I think that needs to come out. I mean, I think also considering that the um, surface that went to replace the concrete. I mean, most of that sort of light tile is it's mm. all grouted. Um, so there's, I mean, it might as well be concrete. Yeah. Right. Um, and I think that the way that even the other stones are set, uh, there's not a lot of space between them. It's very tight. Um, yeah. and, and it's, I mean, I know they use stone dust, but um, they are tight. They're, they're not like set, you know, like we set pervious pavers that you put a little bit of a space between them and give enough. So I think you're getting pretty good runoff off of this already. Mm -hmm. So I appreciate the calculations, yeah. but... Um, I think uh, it would be. Uh, I, th I think we need to. I, I think we need to remove it, given I where it so. is. Mm -hmm. Michael, anything? I honestly, given the scope of the project, I think it's much ado about nothing. No offense to you guys, it's two hundred square feet. Yeah, but I think if this was brought before us, not as part of whatever this was going on, if, if somebody brought out that in front of us, I don't see how we we permit that. If they inside the fifty foot no touch, adding perv uh, per impervious if, in, 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 in an ACEC, AC AC, AC, right? Then on top of that, you add in all the, the the situation how this whole thing came together. That part, that part again, like I said the the last time, I, uh, yeah, I'm looking at that. But I'm also looking at what they're doing on the other side with the with the if this project came before us the right way, they, he is doing all the. Um, the mitigation on the other side with the drainage. He's exactly. lifting up the drain pipe, the, the drain grate by by a foot. Yeah, you know, he's lifting yeah. up the drain. He's lifting yeah, it up. To, to, to improve the uh, storage. Yeah, and it'll, it'll help. It'll help. But yeah. all, right. it's it's takes it takes you about five minutes to do it. Mm -hmm. um, cleaning out the pipe, 
it, the pipe shouldn't be that dirty because it's been carrying yeah. a lot of water. But when you also look at it, that is not even his pipe. Okay, so the town, when they put it in there, they did not even talk to the people and get an easement. Right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I mean, you know, so, we're, we're talking about this, you know. But they, in terms of the level of work he's doing. Down and all this other stuff. <laughs> well, well, I mean, he paid a suit up. Uh, you, you, know, you know, right? I don't know. You know, I'm not, I'm not saying that he, yeah. he, he did it the right way. He, of course, he did it. Yeah. But I also note that I think this is where the only excuse I will make for him, and that is really an excuse. And uh, ignorance of the law, they always tell you that it's not an, an acceptable excuse because everybody will be claiming, well, I didn't know. I didn't know. Right. But when he originally came to do this here, the miscue was, no, you don't need a building permit for that. Right. And he took it as, okay, I don't need any permit, you know? So that's where the language barrier was. Right. And I told him that, I said, when, when they stopped you, then you really shouldn't be doing any more work, right. you know? Right. So. Yeah, so I, I think that's gotta come out. Um. Can I kneel down and pay and pray? <laughs> No, because you'll never be able to get back up. That was great. I've been there. I swear, I'm usually quick, but that's lightning speed. Chill, chill. I'm waiting for the light up. I like that. I really like that. That was quick. That was quick. But you're right, though. I may not be able to. That was a good one. Actually, usually, usually before, we were taught that when you pray, you actually kneel down. Yeah. Now I sit down, and I, but I bow my head. Yeah, this right. works. This this is, is, yeah, yeah, that's it. But that was Again, cool. I was I'm not making a light, but remember, I was the one who said, remember, I was the one who said, I don't want to permit, permit anything, and you wanted to let him rebuild. So I'm just saying, let's think back to that. What are you remember about? that? When you guys said no, let's raise it and, and build what you w was originally permitted, the original whatever three hundred six, and I said no, let's let's not build, not let's let's not let him build anything. I don't want to allow him to do nothing because he broke mm -hmm. the rule. So that's I'm just looking at the whole thing and saying, but but to the last question you posed, if there was a concrete apron and there was the which there was, which we were out there when when me we all went out there as a group. And that was there, and he said, "Hey, can I add twenty by ten out here? And I'm gonna, I'm gonna cover this whole concrete apron. I'm gonna put this nicer looking rock and put some columns with some lights. Again, two hundred square feet on top of the whole yeah, scope. Yeah, but, but, but it's, it's the point of the, it's, it's inside the fifty foot, no touch. Yeah, no touch, and an ACEC. Yeah, mm. yeah. I, but you also have to uh, re remember now that it's all true, mm -hmm. but." And this is again too when people obviously the way it was explained to him, again he should have come for permit. But the previous owner was actually moving all that area. I mean it's just because this guy brought on equipment to do yeah. that cars, you know what I'm saying? No, no, no. So, what you're so saying. he's really looking at it as this is what I was told when you know, of course, brokers will tell me anything. No offense yeah. to brokers, but <laughs> <laughs> broker, you know what to, to make a sale. So that that was the whole idea of buying that, you know. So, and I think well, the fact that he's willing to, you know, fix the drainage, uh, I think pro, that's great. you know. I think so, I, I think that's great as part of the the you know mitigation for the restoration of everything else that was done. Um, but you know, for for me, that that jetting out has got to be removed. Um, and then the area with the proposed pavers off of the, the addition. Yeah. Um, did we say those are going to be pervious pavers? Yeah. Yeah. He hasn't done anything there yet. Right. That's what, okay. And then, there were, and then I'm, I put over a little crush stone there to take any water that will come out of it. Right. What do you guys feel about that area? Yeah, no, I was, I was I mean, you know, it, it is, again, it, it is also partly inside of that 50 foot no touch. Yeah. Um, but at this point, it's, if they're pervious, I, 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 this I, I, point, I, I, at this point, well, I don't know. <laughs> you, you, you know, it's half dozen of one and right. six of the other. We're going to say yes to one and no to the other. Yeah. Um, was, was there any the difference though? Is um, the uh, uh, up at the they're both they're both really close to fifty, but this one is not as close 
to the, you know, if you were looking at, Correct. if you look at the ZBA right. standards for variances, no further nonconformance. Um, so the, the patio extension is further nonconformance. Um, this, this, the patio at the, at the addition, um, uh, you might, you, you might have considered that outside a door, mm. there would be a, a treatment on the ground if he had asked. Um, and it, it, it's not, so that, that's just one way of looking at it. Was that included on the original plans? Any no. kind of a patio there? No, <clears throat> no. Yeah, but the original plans, remember, a little bit not really unclear. Mm. Mm. I mean, my, my instincts uh, are to say um, no to the barbecue bump out and and yes to the the area behind the addition. I mean, it's just that's my instincts. I can't say why one is okay more than the other. There's probably about a fifty one forty nine and a forty nine fifty one on the other one. I mean, it's yeah. um, you know I, you know that's me. Yeah, I think I can get on board with that, Michael. I, no, I, 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 I definitely, I definitely, the one, you know, next to the addition, but again, the bump out, I just, okay. it's 200 square feet. Um, and it's already built. It's going to be further disturbance if he goes in there to rip it out. Yeah, but it's lawn. Yeah. You know. It's not, it's not this, I mean, yeah. it is lawn as opposed to that, the retaining wall. Right. And trying to go in there to move anything in this weather, it's, it's going to be... August before it dries out. Um, all right, so Andrea, where do we stand from your perspective on on this plan? Um, I think we're pretty much there um, with the things that that needed to be done. Um, the question I had, I, I revised the comments uh, today. Um, did you get? Did you get? Yes, yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, and so um, I I didn't have setting the timing for the restoration planting. Everything else was in there. And how you were going to address the, the um, revised foundation, um, you know, was, was, I wasn't unclear on that. Mm -hmm. um, the timing for the, the um, when you're going to put the grate in. Um, and, then, and then other conditions identified at the hearing. I just wanted to point out that uh, Bill Humphrey had, had asked the applicant's engineer to coordinate with DPW to clear the rock drain under Prospect Street, right. remember? Yeah. Um, so that can be coordinated when we do the uh, bridge in that structure? Yeah. That probably one yeah. And also, um, the, the water department is going to be putting in a trench in Prospect Street in shortly to uh, fix that water main. Okay. Which you had already allowed, so they're already yeah. going to open up the street. Right. So, so there is an opportunity to coordinate. Great, great. Um, all right. Uh, any public comments on Thirty Three Prospect Street? Um, I have one comment here. Yeah. So, as part of the the restoration plan, and I don't know if this is in the plans or not. There's Tenants. a tremendous there's a tremendous amount of brush that's that's backed up against. It's in our property. I, I would assume it's in our property. I mean. Th this high stacks of, of branches, mm. um, and it's probably about fifty feet of it. Right. From but that's how it's gonna be removed. Yeah, I'm just. I yeah. want. I'm. Uh, that's. That's the question. I just want to make sure that's gonna Let, get removed. Let's, let's say it specifically. Yeah. Yeah. So that's why I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah. I don't want that sort of just be left there to be. You well, know. I think, yeah. I think uh, Tunisian's report actually calls for that. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. So that Good. I mean the Tunisian's report will be made part of the decision. Yeah. Of course. Right. Okay. So. Yeah, I just wanted to make sure, given... Um, that's a good oh, point, though, that I actually don't have a hard copy of his report. It's, list, it's in here, it's in, your, it's in your notice of intent yeah. as, as, as just a placeholder, and it, it's not in there. So it says, this <coughs> plan consists of an overlay and text layers, and then, yeah. and then it's not in there. It was bound separately. That's the same notice of intent. As a matter of fact, he too, he had said that he actually gave a, had they were given. That's the notice of intent. And he had given it to you guys too. So. Uh, I got it as a PDF. Yeah. I okay. don't have it. I don't have a hard copy of it. Okay. 
I mean, we can pin that out for you. Um, yeah, I, I don't have it as a hard copy. Okay. Um, I've read it online. Okay. We'll come well, that. I'll just I'll just note specifically that we want the the brush piles removed that right. may be on my right. property. Right. right. And then for the timing, I just to give you something to discuss. I said um, begin begin this growing season and complete by October fifteenth of twenty nineteen. Mm -hmm. No, he will. He's willing to do that. He will do that. Okay. Good. He just wants to get it behind him. You know? Oh, sure. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it's been dragging up for a while now. Um, all right, very good. Anything else you want to address? Anything else you want to address? No, thank okay. you. Um, all right, so a, <clears throat> and I guess I'll, I'll, I'll call for a motion for uh, approving the notice of intent contingent upon receiving updated plans. To well, Andrea. What are the plans do you need? Uh, removing the, the jut out, or, or we'll just say that we want it removed. Well, that can be a condition. I don't want right. to. I don't want to be. I don't want to be spending the guys. I mean, believe me, he pays me. I mean, right. No question about that. But I really don't. It will not be. Yeah, I guess we can continue. Condition it that it'll be removed. Yeah. Okay. Not, not piece right there. All right. Remove, right. remove, and restore with um, lawn grass. Yeah. yeah. The natural grades. <coughs> All right. Um, Timing on that? What part of the I, I think when, whenever they're doing the restoration. You know, yeah. The, okay. Yeah, I mean, it's it's no, no sense in doing more work out there than they have to. Yep. Right. Right. Yeah, I guess just also to be done at the same time, like by the October 15th, right? Because they're going to do it. I, I assume, time. my guess would be, given how he probably wants to use his pool this summer, he's going to get rid of it pretty quickly. Yeah, I would assume so, too. <laughs> uh, okay. Um, <laughs> so. All right, so a uh, motion to issue a permit to work in order of conditions for 33 Prospect Street with the conditions noted in the staff report dated December 7th, uh, revised April 16th, 2019, with the additional conditions that the brush piles that uh, are on the Concrom property or bordering it should be or shall be removed. Um, that the patio uh, jut out barbecue area shall be removed and restored with lawn grass to natural grades, and that the proposed uh, patio area outside of the um, addition uh, shall be with pervious papers. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thank Did you. you coordinate with DPW? Um, and that motion to coordinate with DPW. Well, I mean, if it says anyway, as noted in your report. I think it does. Okay. Yeah, okay. it incorporates the okay. uh, motion incorporates the report. Yep, yeah, that's right, that's right. Okay. I'm listening. I'm <laughs> and you're reading, too. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, if I lose that, then I'm done. Yeah. You, might, you might be falling apart, but you're reading comprehension. <laughs> <Okay. laughs> <laughs> oh, thanks, Azu. Appreciate it. Man, you can, you can finish planning your wedding, you know? Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Seriously? No, you start it. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, all right. Uh, Roy, did you have anything on the minutes from April 1st? <laughs> Actually, I do. <laughs> on, page, on page 15. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. So, gosh, tonight's is going to be another 15 pages. Oh, here it is. Uh, page 15 is a minor typo. Sorry. Uh, it says complained, and I think we mean complaint of ATV usage. The yes. second bullet point. Yes. Thanks again. Have a good night. Yeah, good night. Uh, motion to accept the minutes uh, as amended. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 All right, rescheduling the May 20th meeting. Uh, we're going to say May 21st. So, mm, yeah, May 21st, yep. regular 6.30 time, right? Yep. Yep. All right, uh, motion to res... Did we already do that motion? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, yeah okay. Cool. Uh, 37 Lincoln. Um, the conditions, I gave them to you in underboard business. 
uh, draft conditions for the mm -hmm. deliberation. And there are two sketch plans. I actually drafted, drafted up a sketch plan um, to show what was going on. So under your board business. Uh, so the conditions basically are the applicant may clear the native vegetation and expand the lawn no closer than 86 to 88 feet from the wetland edge and at least 10 feet back from the break and slope as delineated by the orange flags AL1 through AL3 located on the annotated sketch plan. The lawn presently within 100 feet of the wetland buffer zone and adjacent to the slope created by the drainage gully may not be expanded any closer than 10 feet from the break and slope toward the drainage gully. All native vegetation between the wetland edge and the allowed clearing shall remain undisturbed with the exception of removing a large pine tree that had fallen. Any disturbed, any area disturbed by removal of the fallen pine tree may be replanted with native shrubs with the prior review and approval of the Eastern Environmental Planner. So can I just ask a question about that? Yeah. So, so the, that tree, are you expecting him to remove? He, he wants it done. Wants but it the, done. I know. Um, he wants to remove the entire tree, not the part that he's, right? I mean, that's the big pine tree. Yeah. All the way back to this turned over stump. Yeah. Leave the stump there? The stump is on the upland side or the fallen side. I can't remember. It's, it's on the wetland side. On the wetland side. Um, leave the stump. It's fallen out and up. Leave it, leave it there. Okay, yeah. I, I'm, I, this is what I'm asking mm -hmm. the question about. Uh, so let's clarify that. That's all. Okay. Yeah, and, and I, I was appreciate. I figured that orange flag was yours, by the way, when I was out. I said, okay, that's where it is. Yeah. <laughs> all right. So we'll just amend that to leave stuff in place. Okay. And if you could wait a little bit to do it, that would be. Yeah, no kidding, right? Mm -hmm. Man, it's wet out there. Yeah, it is. Any improvements to slow or control the flow in the gully created in or near the drainage easement shall be subject to a separate review and approval. Okay. Sounds good. Within 30 days of planting the lawn grass, the applicant shall request a site inspection. At least four permanent markers with eastern medallions shall be installed along the edge of the newly established lawn to be located at the direction of the planner. Mm -hmm. The limit of work shall be delineated with a silt fence anchored in place and inspected by the environmental planner prior to start of construction. And then that the type of material is standard. I just didn't I just didn't use it from down below. Okay. I can tell you that this guy got full value from his application fee. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, that looks good with that um, amendment. Do you have anything else? No. Nope. No, I'm glad we were able to. Thank you, Andrea, for yeah, doing you. all that work. So. Yeah. Um, all right. So we need to, a motion to. Oh, we need a motion to accept those? No, I no, think we, no, we, we didn't actually, left we it. Actually that. Actually to, we, we closed the hearing, but we didn't take a, a vote on right. it. Oh, we right. closed it and we allowed her discretion, to Andrea's discretion. To right. Make, okay, so we'll, we'll issue a permit to work in order of conditions as noted. Uh, as Andrea has laid out, with the addition of leaving the stump in place. All right, so a uh, motion to um, issue a permit to work in order of conditions for 37 Lincoln Street with these uh, special conditions um, Andrea pulled together, uh, noting that on special condition number two, we're going to have them leave the stump in place. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 <clears throat> now, does that uh, point of information? So, does that the does the clock, does that go back to the first, the order of the? No, you closed the hearing, but you didn't yeah. vote. Okay, yeah. So 21 days yeah. from, to, he's got a 10-day he's got um, appeal period. Yeah. Okay. yeah, I just didn't know where we did that the last time, how that actually, that shouldn't um, really come up all the time, but I guess, you know, this way, now it's now. Only, it's only the second time you had to yeah. deliberate. Um, all right, the... Uh, I'm kind of tempted to skip ahead to the enforcement actions, considering the time that we have. Yeah, I'm beginning to fade. Yeah. Um, so, what do we need to do? Nobody's here for that actions? anyhow. So. Um, they're not going to come. Oh. I was my mistake. Um, they asked to have it be relatively um, 
they, they weren't didn't necessarily want um, full knowledge of you know which property and who mm -hmm. yeah. and so really they were asking they're really asking what for feedback from you as to whether or not you want to move forward on any whether or not you're, you're seriously interested or not was it they were looking to sell or they were looking to donate I think they had a few they're not potential. donating they're looking to they're not looking to donate they're looking to um, sell in total with the house sell in part which would be the back property where the retain where there's a natural stone wall yeah. that separates the back yeah. Back field, um, or put a conservation restriction on the back field so it's still still privately owned, but it's in their name. Um, and we buy the conservation in when you when it's a conservation restriction, you buy the development rights. So there's still value to them. I don't know. I mean, it it is a pretty area, but I feel like it's pretty well in circuit encapsulated. It's going to be in our jurisdiction anyways. And I don't think we want to buy a house. Yeah, and, um, and again, I don't think um, it's a historic house, so it's a house that yeah, needs you wanna, love. Mm -hmm. I was going to say, based on our some other projects at CPA with with a house on something, yeah, that's just not something that the town. I, yeah. I don't think right. we should be in the. I mean that 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 back area is a pretty parcel. Oh, that but that is nice. I feel like that's going to be one of the draws for somebody buying the place. I think. Well, not well I, I'm not even quite sure how many. I think they can get one or two estate lots out of it. One, so it'd be two lots right. total. Right. That's what he. That's what his uh, engineer told him. Yeah. I thought you could get probably not even estate, and I seem to think he looking at it just quick that you could get three out there. I not estate. Yeah, not estate. That his his um, his engineer actually looked at it yeah. and and said one additional lot and then and then the then the other thing not to interject politics into this board but you know we're, we're we've got a new school coming up we've got all kinds of other stuff I think to try and get this town to buy some land and a house that so the the, the other thing to consider here so I the think, buying land would be cpa yeah. funds which would not right. interfere with the yeah. school no the, the the other thing to consider here is is um i don't i mean i think the meta comet piece of properties i just don't know how um accessible it is from a recreation standpoint not no. very and to be honest every it's, single house on blackbrook is encroaching on it Mm -hmm. Every backyard, as we saw, even even going back to, I want to say, because we had discussion about high engineer fees that I did all the way back to, I want to say it was 77, there was a set of stairs in the, you know, in the wetland part, in, the, in a buffer zone, and it was a septic repair, and it's kind of, if you look at our easement, you look at the map, every lot is, you know, yeah. there's lawn debris, there's encroachment, pretty much, I think, from every home into <coughs> so, that but, but, it, but that But that's also why I'm, I'm, I'm giving yeah. a little bit decrease in the value of the piece of property, just because that that's not... That, right. It's not like there's a very we, active trail we, system. We, 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 we've, right, yeah. we've got it, we've got an, we've got the, yeah. we've got the corridor already, because it already goes all the way out to the street. So it isn't like we're buying, we're connecting another. It does connect to a piece of property, but... Well, like you said, the front, is an, it's an intermittent stream, so there's, right. there's the oh, yeah. corridor yeah. there. It wasn't intermittent when I was out there. Uh, <laughs> well, no, no, no. <laughs> Nothing is right now. I know. Um, I think so I, raging. I'm hearing from, I think, all of us, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Okay. okay. I, I do want to, as a, as a future project, and I like your reality check on this I was thinking that um, that this was it's kind of an amazingly long Metacomet property um, and there's a tax parcel there's a tax taking parcel at the top five acres that would give cons if, if conservation which is already town already owns as tax title land but if you guys got management of it it'd give you access onto Elizabeth way mm -hmm. um, so I was actually thinking that it was a future project to find out what we owned and whether or not there was encroachment and whether or not a trail could go from Summer Street yeah, definitely. to Depot. Yeah. Yeah. Is it, 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 it is it all wet or is it just not is it gonna is it gonna be likely? Wow. I think, I think it's, it's mostly wet. wet. Oh it's yeah it's, it's a lot wet. of wet. Oh. But I think it's yeah. worth a look. 
Because that would be great to, to connect a couple. You might even areas. be able to get close to the Gill property too. Right. If you, if you go back further and then over to the right, I think we there's either there's state land out there, and I think there's our land. I think it actually connects. Oh wow! Yeah. Oh wow! That'd be great. Um, so. Okay. Uh, all right. So enforcement actions. Which one's next up? Okay. Sorry. Sorry. No. I just want to move it along. Yep. So I tell him no thanks. Yeah. Beautiful, beautiful cross parcel. Okay. But so Forest Edge, um, I can tell you um, that uh, somebody told me about um, a wetland, about somebody clearing their backyard. What is it? What was it? you said? Forest Edge. Twelve Forest Edge. Twelve Forest Edge. It's off a of bay. It's off a of bay. You have to really be that. You have to know to go. You know, past. Uh, what, what's that uh, condominium complex that there is? It's off a mile, road, a milestone road. road. Nope, don't know that. Well, um, don't you tell me where it is. I'm sure. Green, I don't know. Is it Green something? I don't know. The Sawmill name. Lane yes. off of Bay Road. Oh, oh sure. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. Sawmill goes on to Forest Edge, and north yep. of Sawmill is Milestone Road. Yep. So he's he's pretty much at the intersection of Milestone and Forest and right Edge. Right at the end of it. And they've got long lots, and they've got an extensive wetland, as you can see on the picture that I sent him. Um, oh, so he has, um, he's got, this is, this is the wetland before, this is this the is tree really line before he cut. Um, now the property next door, see there's a pool? Mm -hmm. That pool is 50 feet from the wetland edge. So that means this line mm -hmm. is not accurate. His cutting extends at least as far as that pool and probably a little farther. Mm -hmm. So um, I sent him a letter of inquiry. I sent him a, a cease and desist. He's cleared and laid down uh, sand, re regraded, and plans to put up um, lawn within the 100 feet of an, in an ACEC. Um, I told him he needs to know where his wetland edge is and that a 50-foot no-disturb zone probably has to be reestablished. Um, he is a young father, and it, they went had a trip planned for spring vacation, so he couldn't make it today. But um, he gets it. He's disappointed that it took me so long to find him because um, the trees, because it, because he couldn't, he wouldn't have spent so much money yeah. doing what he couldn't do. Uh, trees had to come down, trees fell down in the storm, while the trees are down, we thought we'd do a little landscaping, yeah. you know, the stumps are gone, everything got regraded, maybe we went a little farther than we should have, but we really didn't know. All right, it sounds totally like the right approach, though. Like you said, establish the wetland edge, establish a 50 foot, and then let's, let them, let's see where we are. Right. Okay. So, um, the, the other thing I want to consider here, there's a... a, a in it, in it, no, it's an intermittent stream that's probably a drainage ditch between those two homes. That's definitely a drainage basin yeah. that looks like it's not functioning. Yeah, it is. Really not functioning. Mm -hmm. um, I thank you. I don't consider that an intimate stream. I, I, it might be. Well, I, I, I don't know. There was, check. there was a pipe. Couple pipes. Those look like four bays. Yeah. Those look like those look like those look Aren't like those the bogs that are behind the wetland system that we drained to fix the Bay Road problem. This is this is the, the subdivision right behind Sawmill. Yeah. Um, and yes, this subdivision may have had something to do with all the water down on Bay Road. Huh. And that that what I think is a detention basin is absolutely not working and has not been maintained. Right. So I don't know how old this subdivision is, but somebody needs to fix that. I was going to go after that from a planning pers planning board perspective. Yeah. I, I, I just, I, I, it's I, not functioning. Bill would, Bill would know, but I want to say that's that was. Um, that's a one homeowner's. One of Mr. Tosca's last projects, be, and he right. just passed. So. In Tosha. Yeah, in I'm pretty sure that was one of his projects. I'm pretty pretty certain. Mm. But I just want to put. But that I know nothing in there is nothing as you said. It, nothing has been maintained because when I went to look at the Bay Road thing, I we went you all the way back up there with. Lee Anderson who worked for the town for many years and was on our fire department mm -hmm. and lives right there and yeah we went and not any one of them is maintained. Okay. So the he basins are so so he's 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 being responsive he's being a good doobie Great. but I think you should write an enforcement order just because it doesn't have to be 
doesn't have to be nasty. I just think you should put it on record. Yeah, put it on record. Yeah, that, you yeah, said you said you'd do this. Yeah. Um, well, motion. just to maintain consistency too, right. so that everybody, you know, we, we're treating um, all enforcements. Motion to issue same. enforcement action for 12 Forest Edge Road, as uh, Andrea had outlined for a game plan to start. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So. Any other enforcement? Yeah. Yeah, like two more. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's crazy. Not everybody gets. Not everybody gets treated the same way. Um, we did okay. Five twenty three. Five twenty three is an inquiry from a neighbor who is saying that um, there's a property south of this property. Five twenty three is south of. What's Foundry. It's on. It's on. It's on Turnpike, and it's south of Foundry. Um, and it's a long, thin property. And Chase Landing is across the. Um, is to the south of it. You guys familiar with Chase Landing? Mm -hmm. I am from the other day. <laughs> okay. Because I took pictures from Chase Landing. Because so. you were able to get to Chase Landing. So I didn't know that the man, I didn't know that the Chase Landing had gave us that permission. So I'm looking at it from um, well, the condo the to the so. south, condo to the north. And he's clearing. And he might be clearing within 100 feet of a wetland. And I told him, I sent him a, a, sent him a notice by certified mail on Thursday. At, at, at what's going on through the woods? And yes, yeah, it's, it's in the back. It's yeah, in the he, back. He's definitely gone into the woods. So 523 Turnpike. Yeah. South what of... What else is around that? Uh, Chase it's Landing. Across, it's across the street from the... Um, uh, oh, this from, one is... From the golf Andrew. place. Abutts Andrew. Pine Oaks. Andrew. Are you checking both pages? Huh? Check both pages. Um... It is uh, five twenty three. Five twenty three turnpike. So, so you can see here from this picture, he he's he's definitely doing something in the woods. This is the rear part of the property. Oh yeah, three. definitely, huh? I just don't know where that is relative to the to the any sort of wetlands back there. So the wetland is down by the back edge of the property yeah. and once he got to the shed the shed was like 150 feet from the wetland line so once he went past the shed if he went halfway That's from the shed that? to the property then he then he's there what's that is that it? yeah oh chase oh yeah chase Lane. Yeah, see this is his property ah oh oh it's the okay here, gotcha. it's this long long property he's got tons of trucks and stuff mm -hmm. in there so okay Boats, all kinds of stuff. So he's clearing, and he's taken he's taken property out, and um, uh, I my my initial reaction was I'm not sure where the wetland line is, so just tell me what you're doing, so that Maybe. I didn't. But now, if you got better pictures, I then I, I mean I have I have a couple of pictures where I held it up as high as I could over the fence, so I mean you can look at it. And, I mean it's just here here's um. If this is at all helpful. That wetland line, see how long and thin it is? Mm-hmm. Um, that wetland line actually, see how the streams? Yeah. It comes right up to the edge in, okay. in some cases. And this is Turnpike. There's Foundry Street. Right. And, and this pond over here is Meadowbrook. Meadow, Maplewood, day camp. Oh, yeah, yeah, and then you got this, And then you got this big farm. And then he's just long and thin. Across the street is the... Um, yeah, he's definitely within 100 feet. He's definitely within 100 feet. Um, it, there's some kind of... Uh, what's across the street? Some kind of... Golf. Yeah, golf, golf place. Yeah. Golf place. Yeah. The, 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 mi now. the mini golf place. Yeah, yeah, golf country. Yeah, Chase Landing. That's where... That's uh, where it is. Former selectman Dan Smith used to live Used there. to be Dixie's. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. So, 523. 523. Um... And for an enforcement order, um, yeah, uh, identify the that feeds into Maplewood. Identify mm -hmm. the wetlands and um, identify the wetlands and no clearing within fifty feet without uh, a need to restore. Same as twelve forest. Come in for a wet. Come in for 
Well, I mean, they should need approval for clearing within 100 feet, right? Right, but restore within 50. Oh, okay. All right. But are we going to allow, like, the taking of that 50 feet? Uh, so come in and... Uh, I think that so come, come in with a notice of intent. Yeah, I think he's got to identify the what. Yeah, come in with a notice of intent. The, yeah. Stop, stop doing what he's doing until right. we've issued stop a permit. Stop season assist. <laughs> don't do anything the else. Line and don't do anything else until you follow a notice of intent. Yeah, because otherwise we're just giving up. Right, fifty feet. Okay. So what? Everybody in town can just mow down the outer Go, 50. Up to fifty feet. Right. So, so stop. File. And um, and and restore and it, what? application and wetland line and. Well, I think that application and wetland. I mean, I mean, I think our. I, th I think we have to talk to him. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, yeah. Until, until we know Come how in. far he's gone. Right. And well, it's all supposition. Maybe he measured the line. Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. Who knows? Right. Right. Yeah. right. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Come in, Mason. Yeah. Get some information. Okay. Um, all right. Uh, motion to issue an enforcement order for 523 Turnpike Street. Um, cease and desist. Establish wetland line and come in on May 6th with the notice of intent. Yeah. Come in May 6th with a plan. With a plan. Okay. With a plan we'll for a proposal. Yeah. Wait a second. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I am fading hard. <coughs> okay. Um, all right, we're going for next enforcement. <laughs> next, this is like a this is a record four enforcements in one minute. Yeah, it's, people are all and they all out hit works. last week, right? Yeah, um, this one I don't. Um, I actually wasn't planning on taking an action unless you guys know something I don't know. Um, this one is two twenty four, um, and two twenty two twenty and two twenty four Turnpike. What happened here? No, can you? Yeah, hop, hop. So what happened here is Source Pond Road. Yeah. Um, I could not figure out what the heck was going on over here. Well, yeah, what's well, going on over here? We've been going on over here for a really long time. Two twenty. Two twenty. You see where the dot is? Yeah. Oh, up there. Okay. Yeah. So this stream continues through the backyard. Yeah. yeah. Supposedly goes under Source Pond, and then this wetland area here yeah. is open water. Yeah, that's, and that's what I saw. It's open water, and they um, were com they were com the person who called was thinking that there was a this this area has more open water now than it used to, and it's because uh, a ditch a drainage that may have been built under Source Pond Road in the 1970s wasn't working. Well, there was no drainage, there was no discharge pipe that I could see mm -hmm. underneath Source Pond. I don't think it's, I don't think that's broken. I don't, it just, I don't think it exists. So what you see coming through the backyard of 220 Turnpike is like groundwater. Mm -hmm. And what you see as open water on the other side of Source Farm is Water. Yeah, it's what? what it's real wet. Yeah. I've got water, you know. Everybody's and it's not water where they've never had it before. Yeah, and I don't think it's um, I don't, I don't, I didn't see any current action of, and I didn't see any, I didn't see anything that looked so, new. So who, who who do we think his his uh, a neighbor is concerned that there could be somebody a mosquito at two twenty create that this that the south of south of South of 220. Mm -hmm. um, so, so is that, 220. So, so, so 226. I mean, they're they've got uh, they're doing some sort of uh, you know, firewood, you know, um, um, you know, firewood. You say south, so we're heading farm, toward, right? like heading towards Doyle's. Down uh, down the street. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. So so it's it's um, across it's the street. Door. Behind, so it's, that's where Turnpike goes straight, and it, it go, left is Washington Street. So uh, Doyle's is on Washington. Yeah, yeah. You take a left, or you take a left to go to West Bridgewater and go to Noonan and CPR and right. Manly Street. Right, right. Yeah. So you're saying heading from Source Farm towards what we just talked yes, about. Yes, West Bridgewater. Okay. Yeah. 
So what what the applic what the complainant is saying is that when Source Farm Road was built in the late '70s, mm -hmm. there was supposed to be a pipe under the road, which may be covered now to, to soil accumulation. The pond, the pool was not meant to be there, according to neighbors, and has been fortified in the past several years by the piling of branches, leaves, and soils. I didn't see a debris I, pile. I did not see any debris pile. Mm. As a result of clogging the drainage, because he thinks that there really is a pipe underneath seven, about underneath there, the entire backyard of 224 literally fills up with standing water. That's the, that's the property to the north of Source Pond Road. Fills up with water. They don't seem to mind. Their use of untreated wood chips and sawdust from firewood production to fill in parts of the yard concerns us about mosquitoes and other bugs that may be nesting in the chips. Source Pond Road was built in the late 70s as a joint construction plan between two towns. Uh, I don't know which town may have the construction details on the road. It was smaller in the 1970 cart path. So, um, what is this back here? My reaction Fourth was, oh, is it? I yeah. don't see... Huh. I don't see a problem here, okay. um, but I will bring it to the attention of DPW and yeah, exactly. check to see if they have any records of there being a pipe there. But I didn't see it. Yeah, there's. I, I, so I, so I, I, I no I was, action. I, I was, I was at the like I literally went to this property and you know listen if if I can't see more standing water than I think's unreasonable, I mean in this day and age, I mean I. This time, I mean, there's water everywhere, right? right. And I, I saw the wetland on the back of 226, yeah. and I said, Yeah, that's a little pot thing there that's you know, like 25 feet across, and that's it, yeah. And it seemed isolated yeah. to me, it, right? And it didn't seem like the trees were still all growing there, the, there were branches yeah, and no, stuff. Was, I mean, yeah, there, there's stuff from, from uh. You know, cutting cut trees, but it's like, hey, it's not, some funny, you know. Like, but it's not but a storage I area. I didn't, I didn't it looked even think, disturbed. No, I, it looked I, like I it was keeping. Think, but I didn't even alone. think the firewood, uh, you know, um, splitting prop, you know, manufacturing or whatever it is right there is going on. I didn't find it. No, that's what I meant. That's the same as it's or, always been. I, yeah. I, I was over the because they do the the thing they do the uh, the the Christmas thing. Yeah, and. I don't know, it looks the same, but nothing looks different. Mm. So, you know, uh, I, so no action. No. Good. So not everybody's treated the same. Uh, Sometimes no action is the right Well, answer. not, I shouldn't say treated the same, but if you're going to... There know doesn't saying. appear to be yeah. an infraction. No, that's not this time. actionable. No. Right. But three out of four. Yeah. Okay. Um, all right, so there's that. Uh, go back to wetland another day. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Uh, any any like any key highlights from oh. your updates or? Oof, I forgot. My top three. I think I okay. We already got the site inspections. Oh, um, I did. Uh, Ken Williams on April 9th did release water um, from the dam just by loosening up the top boards, and um, it was enough to to get the water to stay flowing and nothing is bursting. Um, it should be, the water should come down slowly. He actually was concerned about making sure the water came down slowly so it didn't affect the neighbors. Um, I've had pre-construction meetings over at Meadowview Commons, which is the Turnpike Street Affordable Housing, 35 lots, and Nine Mill Street. DPW is gonna go take a look at that project. The, the mm -hmm. Nine Mill Street is De Stefano. Um, oh yeah, yeah, recreating yeah. Recreating the stream. Yep. Yeah. There's nothing but tailings up there. Some it's like it's like we're recreating a stream that has been filled a long time ago, hmm. and it's just like we'll just make a stream somewhere. Um, but um, it got, does go across. He's gonna look. It, it, the pipe is like three quarters of the way. The pipe under the street is like halfway full of silt. Mm -hmm. So when he cleans out the silt on the driveway and he fixes the driveway. Then it'll it'll um, I think he's it should a, take care of a big part of the problem. I think he's got a culvert underneath his driveway now. I think that's in. I didn't notice, I tried he always drive had one. He always had it. Uh, this looks new to me. No, remember he was gonna do. He was gonna. He was talking to Billy about the same thing about coming up and working with with DPW and yeah, yeah. yes, a new, right. So he doesn't need to go under the street yeah. with a new one. It, um, but it is. He's doing a lot of work up there. 
yeah. um, since Thursday. So well, I should go I, back I, and double I go check. by there several times a week. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that's my neighborhood. So. Okay. So he is, um, I don't think he needs to take the, the culvert underneath the street, but I think he needs to clean it. And there may need to be um, uh, some kind of stone uh, diffusion right. pad on conservation land. Mm, okay. So we told him. Yeah, just to kill the velocity? Yeah. So we told and, and hold the silt in place. Mm -hmm. um, pre application meeting, sign replacements actually moved into production. And that's it. Okay. Um, and 660 Jason, Eastman is moving along. Oh, I haven't spoken with him since the day after the hearing. And, you know, I figured next week would be the 20. 29th. Okay. The 22nd is this week. 29th is next week. So that's when I was supposed to go see him. All right. Very good. Uh, we'll move. 22nd we'll, we'll, is next week. Oh, good. We'll take up the wetland fee <laughs> next Monday. Good. Good. Thanks. Well, that's I, when I, I was supposed to go see him oh, first. Can, can I? Can I just have one one comment about the fees that that in, in reading something, um, and it's somewhat in response to Andrea's comment today about you know fees are supposed to cover the costs of what what we do and we should never sort of discount that that's part of it and um, I, I know our intention is to um, reduce the fees on certain things related to um, nonprofits and people that um, have uh, financial um, hardships and whatnot um, I just as we do that and I, I don't know how to do this um, do we have any idea what the overall impact of that could be in total fees in a year I mean, is, is it is it five thousand dollars? Is it ten thousand? Is it two thousand? Um, only because I, you know, we we still have to run a, a environmental planner office, and right. um, I, I just would hate to have to go into the. Well, other the easiest way to calculate it financially, in an easy way, would be to get the last, I, don't know, I guess, probably five or ten years worth of annual reports and go to the, uh, you know, go to. The conservation annual report, which would say this many NOIs, this many RDAs, yeah. and you could probably get a rough estimate off of that. Right. You well, know, that's, that's the total amount, but that's not necessarily the ones that would be. No, well, I know you'd have to. You'd have to. Well, as we both did the same legwork when we got on here, we'd basically have to go through and look and say, hey, this was NRT, or this. You know, what would you say? This, this was. Wow, this was an elderly person. Right. This how do you was, find? How do you find? How do you find the? How do you find those? How do you find you these veterans? Have to know. You just have to know. You just have yeah, to know so the names. I can't do that. Like I have a near photographic memory, so like every hearing that we've had here, if I saw the name and say, like I was saying about the hearing earlier, it's oh yeah, that was that. Could we compile a list of notices of intent uh, over the last five years with the applicant's name, and we could pass it through our Michael filter? Mm -hmm. No, I look. I, I mean, it's a yeah. it's a very fair question. How, how much? Are no, we, we should. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I would want to impact the rest of the town in a significant manner. If it's right. if it's oh, de minimis, if it's I don't mind. If it's five hundred bucks a year, I don't care. No, it's, right. a, it's a fair. It is a fair question, and that's easy. I can I work on that. Well, I just you know I don't know what our resources and right. Do we have the resources in the office. We have to look we that have up. the notice of intent of value. We do have the list because Permadise gives it to us. Okay. Okay. So ever since 2015, we can get we can get a report well, off of Permadise. Right. That, that's so enough that, data. Yeah. To us. That should be yeah. enough. Yeah. Okay. So we'll get we'll give you the give you the printout. Yeah. You can yeah, figure it can out. Go right through. So that, um, that was my only comment is that I was thinking about. That's a good point. Yeah. So. The the um. Because there's, there's one fee that we put at a dollar, and I'm just saying, if we're going to put it at a dollar, I just want to make sure that we yeah. understand yeah. what what that means. Yeah, we should. So. All right. Anything else on that one? Have only that. that. Only that. If I if 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 I end up being someone's consultant. Yeah. It is not. It comes out of. It comes out of work I would otherwise do. It's not. You get. You collect application fees. Right. I can't access that money, for, for helping out. You know the I Joe understand. that needs a consultant. I can go get a consultant to with that application money, and I can say go help Joe out because I don't have time to do it. Well, uh, considering and, how proactive and active you are in some of these things, should we add something where it's like if if you if if there's there's time for it and the product isn't you know big enough for bringing a consultant, you can hire the town agent at X dollars per hour and just do a time and material situation. 
Oh, I don't know. That'd be too. That's too uh, subjective. I, that's a, that's about. That means it, that means I work more than forty I, I, hours a week. I I, I think that you know because I I, 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 I mean I do, but it, but that means that I have to do it outside of town hours. Okay. So 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 I think that that you know my goal here is to make sure that we understand that the the fees that generate cover the cost of the department, but I, yeah. I think we do have to be. In, in Andrea's point and. You know, when she does it, I'm very appreciative of what she does. That's why I <coughs> thank her tonight uh, mm -hmm. for what she did. And it really should be the applicant who's thanking her. He um, did. But um, he figured it out. You know that that um, you know because it you know she's got a finite amount of, of time right. to get stuff done, just like the rest of us in our own jobs. And we, you know, at the end of the week, we don't get it all done, and, and that's something that we have to sort of realize. And you but know, you're sitting on you're sitting on on application fees and they can be used that application fees can be used for anything that <clears throat> helps with the permitting of helps with your permitting job right. so yeah if somebody comes in that doesn't doesn't get it it's it's I'd rather I'd rather hire someone to help them than spend the kind of time I had to spend on this project Hmm. Because it took away from my day job. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and you have, that's what the money's for. The money is to help with permitting assistance. But it's a consultant. Right. Because you don't, if you take it out of my, if I do the work, you don't see, you don't see what doesn't get done. Right? And I'm aware of that. <coughs> but but, but should, should, should we just say, sorry, you've got to go hire a consultant. I can hire one for you if you need it. Yeah. If you if you're having trouble, but where, where do we, we make can it? pay. Where, 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 we can pay. But how how do we make? How do you pick what applicant right. pay pays exactly. and what that's, doesn't? That's what I was trying to say. Yeah. It, that doesn't work. For right. Me. Just because they don't get it, does that mean that they shouldn't have to pay? Well, this guy didn't get it, and he continued through the process. Yeah. And it got to the point where you were going to approve him anyways, and you didn't have a plan to approve. So I went out and drew it. Hmm. You know, you were going to approve a project and you didn't know what. You here. wanted to. You wanted to approve it. I wasn't here then. So it's like, it's like you needed a plan. Well, I, th I, think, I, think, <laughs> you know? I think in general, conceptually, we, we wanted to approve it. Yeah. It, it just, yeah. You know, how, and generally, how, conceptually, he knew what he wanted, but he had no idea. On the ground, he had no idea what he wanted to do. So let, let, let me ask this question. I really don't want us to be here. Yeah. Think yeah. about this, though. That's the problem with fees. Yeah. And, and so... so um, it worked really how, well how, for how, this project, the, how, when, how, for the day camp, though. Yeah, that's... Yeah, yeah. I think that's a... Yeah. I mean, that, that, that's a different animal. Yeah, doc, but that was doc, consulting fees. Right. Dr. Oh, Mitchell. yeah. That, no, I think that project's different than the average. Mm -hmm. So w w what would it cost an applicant to go out and... Hire somebody to do what you did to that level of detail, not the full blown. Uh, yeah, I didn't you know, do Tunison or LEC right, or something right. like that. Couple hundred, five. Yeah. But you know. Yeah. But then you have the then you have the tax. Then look at it from the taxpayer side and say, well, is it the person supposed to help me with basic questions? We're not saying draw a full blown plan, but I'm saying, hey, a quick sketch in the field. That, that that's cool. Laying out a full engineered plan, that's a different, that's a total different answer. Right, but, but, but you can't do a sketch in the field. You, know? <clears throat> you can't, a sketch in the field is like, yeah. you got to take it to court. Well, it may, maybe it's like, hey, the, the initial consultation is like, yeah, you, you need a consultant for this. We can help you hire one, but you're going to have to pay that bill. Because, like, take. And the, and the alternative is you don't do it, or if you do it and without the approval and you get an enforcement, you're probably going to pay more than. Well, maybe we look at what Bridgewater does. What Bridgewater does is, because I asked for a, a, a town employee, and um, they, like there, it's an inspection fee. There's no RDA, no nothing. This person wanted to, to cut it. It's a, a $50 inspection fee, and the agent comes up and looks at it and tells you what's what, and that's that. Oh, I do those. I do a couple, yeah. three of those a week. Yeah. Yeah, but maybe that's, that's a good... Well, yeah, I, I'm willing. Okay. I'm willing to talk about it. Yeah, we got. Yeah, no. To your point, though, we should, we got to find a better system. 
But, but I think it's only, but, but, it doesn't but, happen but, very often, but, but, but it I'll, happened but, with this guy. Right, but, but, and you end up but, just getting sucked into the... But, but I want to be clear here that part of what Andrea is talking about here isn't just about um, the cost of it from how much it costs to do it. Right, it's, her it's time. Like the time, yeah. Like, right, taking away from it, other projects that people are paying for and that might be... Right, know, and what she ends up doing is she ends up working extra to right. make up and get caught up on right. other things that she was out in the field mm -hmm. for three hours dealing with this. And, you know, I mean, that's, that's how I look at it. Um, so, I, I mean, to me, you know, Andrea's... I mean, you know, I, I'm so thankful to have Andrea here. And, and, Agreed. Uh, um, you know, and the, the value that she brings to the entire town is, is immeasurable, in my opinion. So, and, and you know, she gives way more back to well, yeah. the applicants. Oh, mm -hmm. no, I think the applicants are lucky, and it's, a, and it's a vast change from the past. But, but again, as Dan has, has stated, and I've stated, in the, the past was far too extreme, and now maybe you might be too given. So there's got to be a middle there. Yeah. Okay. Because in the yeah. past, people were getting hammered with the let's hire a consultant. People were just getting hammered. So there's, there's definitely, you know, there's a middle there. Yeah, I mean, the consultants I've seen here in the two years I've been doing this have been all on target. They've been more complicated projects that need The, the last two years, I have no complaints whatsoever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. but, but at the same time, I've also seen Andrea go way overboard in helping out. Yeah, you know, but back to your fees. I guess if I, when I go through and look at the data, I guess what you know, what would you do? And it's not the case, but you know, what do you, what do you do if it, something you know, like to me, in my eyes, like, hey, it's a veteran, it shouldn't pay. Yeah, and that's just my opinion. That's how I am. Well, other towns give, other towns give, give, in, give in, in so money on, they give on top of what we do here in town. Not you know, to compare apples to apples, other towns. So, so I only want to know the data. Yeah, yeah. I, I only, I, and well, when I, when I say data, the, the, the dollars and cents. Correct, yeah. that's what I mean. Like, hey, yeah. I think this is my estimation. Uh, it's five discussion. grand or, or whatever it might be. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. I, I think it's yeah, no, I wouldn't write. I wouldn't write any names. The way that I would do it is I would look at it and say, like, okay, like here, I, okay, new plantings. Oh, I know that guy's a vet. Okay, I know that guy's, you know. Well, yeah, you can, you can just a know. A hardship. Just, just and know. I'll just do this. Ten, ten, okay, so that was a, what did they pay? And write it down, and right. then it's forgotten. I wouldn't present, I would never present the, specific, like the specific name or organization, because that's not fair. Yeah, right? you'll, you'll, you'll get the specific information. Yeah. All you need to give us is, but here's I the number of NOIs, that, yeah. here's the number that would have yeah. been either vet, nonprofit, or what, what do we say if they qualified for? Yeah. Hardship. hardship. Yeah, income um, hardship. Income hardship. Yeah. Um, yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't do that because I wouldn't want somebody doing that. To so me. I just want us to know the number. We don't need to dox people. No. We just need to say. I, oh, well, yeah. We're just looking looking at the. Data I just, I just want to know the number. That's yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. I, I don't know that it's going to change our, our opinion about it. I just no. want to know the number. But well, you, you know the, the board of selectmen would have that question for sure, especially considering considering all the, yep. the budget exactly. situation in town. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, all right, good. Uh, seeing nothing else, motion to adjourn. Oh, one last thing. Uh, I'd like to thank our former chair, Tim McCall, who still was doing the water sampling last week for us. <laughs> <laughs> Great. I, I delivered that to New Bedford, I believe. No, it was Fall, uh, River. Fall River. Fall and River. I, I did three sites myself. Beautiful. Nice. Really? Not too. Yeah, I went up to the uh, hatchery in North Attleboro. Oh, I used oh, to do that one. <laughs> yeah. And the, and, and, the, and the guy came over and said, "What are you doing?" He, no. But he said it in a nice ways. He couldn't. He thought I was out sampling for, uh, you know, fish. Or oh something. yeah. Do you want those um, fact sheets? Yeah. Oh. Did you want to read them? Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Because yeah. I, I, if you, if I'm gonna get I, them online, so yeah, oh, I'm online. you're gonna get them online. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, good. You get a chance to give them back to me so I can scan them. Oh yeah, yeah. You guys can get them online. Yeah. Yeah. I'd like to have the, like to scan them on my zero. Yeah. All right. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. All right.